Thornberry. I'm with the Inspector Services Group, part of Residential Warranty Services, to clear up the whole name confusion from earlier. Thank you, sir. Uh, and we work with a bunch of home inspectors, inspectors everywhere, all across the U.S. and Canada. We have a few outside of the country, not that many. And by the way, you are welcome to record as much as you want. Um, I don't mind. Because, um, you know, there's two things I, I don't do. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't lie to inspectors. I lie to my children. You know, I tell them what kind of... Yeah. You know, punishment might come to them if they do, which sometimes it's empty threats. Um, and I don't say no. It doesn't mean I say yes. It means I don't say no. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, before we get started and I introduce our, uh, our guest and tell you a few things I, I have for you, which this is not the Nathan show. Uh, I'm just hosting mostly. Is there anyone in this room that does not use our inspection warranties currently in their business? Anybody? One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. Thank you. Um, and I, I only ask that because some rooms we go to, you know, it's half of them don't, uh, or seventy-five percent of them don't. And some some rooms, it's it's most of them. And I just maybe hadn't met you personally before, and then we can kind of skip that for some of the others. So expedites things. So appreciate that. Um, what you're going to uh, hear today is from uh, a message from four different inspectors that do have in common that they utilize our warranties and other stuff, but it's not all about that. It's about how they operate their business, how they promote their business, uh, how they administer it. And it's four different approaches from four different guys. And the only two things they actually really have in common is that they utilize our services and that they all do seven figures and grow at double digits percentages year over year. And that's very unique. You know, if you look across all home inspection companies, there are very few, I mean, a handful in the world's history that have been able to say that. Uh, and again, nothing in common between these guys other than those things. I mean, you have uh, one guy that started as the man in a truck, you know, forever ago. One guy that I would put in that mid category of, of starting with the, the man in a truck, um, not as long ago as like my dad who was 35 years ago and then you have an, another guy that uh, is like me a son of a home inspector and came in and took over a home inspection business and another guy that wouldn't know a house if it bit him in the face I mean does <laughs> knows nothing about home inspection and came into it fresh and you know that guy came in knowing nothing about home inspection two years later he's doing two million bucks and he's in a market that's smaller than yours here for those of you that are uh, local. So thank you for coming to the tour. We've been in business for 30 years. I'll just give you a little bit of background about the uh, warranty side of things. Uh, we don't simply do home warranty products for home inspectors. Our primary business is home warranties for real estate agents at closing. So those, those one-year warranties. And I say primary business because that's where a majority of our revenue comes from. Um, a majority of our transactions that we're involved in are the, of course, the home inspection warranties, but those are, you know, come in packages that cost anywhere from zero to 20 bucks. And we do a ton of things for inspectors. And we have the, the Breeze Radon machine coming out. We have uh, the, our, our certified inspection expert certification, you know, which is, you know, much, uh, much like the CMI, you know, in the marketplace. Uh, we also have a free online educational platform. And I want you guys all to write down this web address, uh, homeinspectionuniversity.com. And let me tell you why you're going to write that down. <coughs> um, Mike Casey and I, if, for those of you who aren't familiar, Mike Casey is like super technical. He trained more inspectors than anybody uh, as part of the old Kaplan, uh, now Kaplan. It used to be called something else, whatever it was. Uh, and he's had two schools. Now he, he is our director of education at Home Inspection University. Um, He's twice retired from that. And I sat down with him and I said, you know, I have a problem. And that problem is, is that when I go to home inspection seminars and conferences and I see all the guys doing continuing education and teaching guys how to inspect electrical systems and HVAC and, you know, roofing systems and everything. The problem is, is I don't see anyone who looks like me teaching it. I see the same guys that have been teaching it for 20 years, and they're all great guys, you know, the, uh, the Kenny Hart's of the world, the Stephen Gladstone's of the world, uh, uh, the Bruce Barker's. And I said, I would really like to see all of them really, you know, really well documented. So let's take those guys and do some really high quality video, go through stuff that's fairly timeless. And we started that process about four years ago in taping and editing all those videos. 
Right now, homeinspectionuniversity.com, you do not have to be a client of ours. Anything is free to everybody. You don't have to belong to any particular association. And you can log in and see about three to 400 hours of continuing education courses, of uh, initial inspection training courses. Right at the top of the menu, you've got 60 hours of that. Uh, and all done by our staff. And then you also have marketing and admin courses as well as all of our big conferences like the Power User Conference in Indianapolis and our Inspection Super Conference in, uh, in Vegas, which we'll hold again in September. Uh, we also you know, care a lot about the industry and we try to uh, push things in the right direction. And for those of you that, that go, okay, um, what is the right direction? What, you know, what's our biggest pain point? And uh, uh, you're Jeff, right? Jeff with American Integrity Home Inspections, AIHA, of course. Um, you know, if you could accomplish anything today, what would it be? Number one top priority. I just want to learn more in every aspect I can. Learn more in every aspect you can. All right, that's online for free. Dot com. You can go now. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> but I mean, Have a nice day. <laughs> but but would your your focus be? You learn that in order to accomplish what to to do more home inspections or to have uh, you know a better quality product or to charge more money. You know what what do you ultimately get out of that? All of the above. All of the above. All right. And this is this is the thing that that you know I personally see as crazy. And I, I, I'm a 20 year veteran of the industry as an adult, but as a teenager I was typing reports and taking orders. And um, you know if you if you have a, a a family run business, you know, you're all in it. Uh, and so I kind of feel like I've been in home inspection since I was about four years old. And I, and the same thing keeps happening over and over again. Home inspectors say, well, people should come to me because I know more or because I have, offer better quality and gosh, they should pay us more. But at the end of the day, there's one thing that holds that back in a big way. And, and I'll talk about this some today and that would be our standards. Our standards of practice are designed only to cover our butts but not to fill our bank accounts. And that's a huge problem for the industry. We'll get into that as we uh, go through. I'll also show you some cool marketing pieces that we put together that are effective and they work. You know, there's a reason that I'm here today and very transparently can afford to invite four great big clients uh, and put them in a private airplane and come around the country to see you guys and charge you nothing for it and then even provide food at hotel rates along with the coffee that should cost 150 bucks a gallon. You know, this week cost me 60 grand. It costs you nothing to be here. The reason I can do that is because this stuff works. Uh, and, you know, these guys approach this in very different ways. You know, one guy, he does huge metrics, number of times that he's out there talking to people and, and getting the message out there. Another guy j just delivers a, the message in an amazing way and he really teaches and educates people. Maybe that's the methodology that you like. Another guy is almost on autopilot. A lot of communication and emails that happen. Another guy is like pure grit uh, and just not accepting no for an answer. I had a business partner a long time ago. I say a business partner. He bought a roofing company that I sold uh, back in 2006. He was a televangelist who made money off of uh, acts of God. Right? <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Uh, and he, he like drove a Ferrari, had a 15,000 square foot house and, you know, like one of those indoor golf things before everybody had one. I mean, not everybody, but, you know, more people. Um, he got in some tax evasion trouble later. So I got, probably should have put those two things together. But, I, I, you know, the guy was just too dumb to know that he couldn't do it. You know, he built a huge roofing operation where he was buying up operations like mine left and right. Um, so implementation is key and just, you know, going for it. And we're going to show you that. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about the future of home inspection and where, you know, we're going as an industry. And, and hopefully you take away from that some things that you can put into action in your business. I'll also tell you later about the next structural warranty, which I've already gotten some questions on. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit about how our breeze radon monitoring systems work if you ever you know, do radon testing, which you're not going to do here. But for the camera, I might say something, just a few words. Uh, and I'll, of course, invite you all to our Inspection Super Conference. In fact, you have these little cards in front of you, and these little cards are going to be for three different purposes today. Number one, when you fill them out, you're going to get a free ticket to Inspection Super Conference, regardless of affiliation with any uh, association or use of our products or anything else. It's a great big party in Vegas. 
you'll love it. It's like every conference on steroids put together. Uh, also, we're going to draw for three things. Sarah, I forget the three things. I know one was the CMI. Uh, what? Yeah, there was a CMI registration, so that's uh, courtesy of Nick Romico at Internachi. He couldn't be here today because he had stuff going on. Um, and that's how he kind of hey. Yeah, if you want to ask Nick any questions, I can probably answer the way he would answer verbatim. Um, uh, and then we also have a drawing for uh, brochures, printed brochures, printed design brochures, and I'll show you what those will look like, as well as a custom promotional video. So we're going to draw for those. And you'll all get invites where you pay nothing. So fill out the card. Why not? The third reason you fill out the card is that you'll see this little notes section at the bottom. Um, so if there's some special request, something you'd like from our staff or whatever, and you find you know that throughout the day, or I say, hey, put that on your card. We'll get that done for you. It goes back to our office's to-do list, and the largest staff in, in support of home inspectors in the world's history goes to work for you guys. So it's kind of our uh, to-do list. And you know, I'd, I'd love to bring, you know, all of our great big clients, uh, but some of them just come to us. I mean, I, you know, today we had three additional guys, other than the, the four guys coming on the whole tour with me, we had three clients in the seven figure category, um, you know, walk into the room. So thank you for being here. I'm going to make sure that you deliver, uh, or we deliver for you today. I would bring all of them. Here's the one I usually give as an example of somebody that I'd, I'd love to bring on the tour, but the problem is you couldn't understand a word he says. Uh, his name's uh, Jason Michael. He's in Raleigh, North Carolina, and, and you know, he's doing the same kind of volume and numbers and, and just kicking butt, and that's, you know, that's impressive right there. And maybe you don't want this. Maybe you want something else. Maybe you want a long line of people coming to your smaller business that you, you know, is manageable for you and you know, that, that you can sleep well at night with. But whatever it is, you can accomplish it. Um, I'm going to introduce you to our first, uh, first guest on this tour. Uh, he has this inspectedhouses.com program you've probably heard about online or seen people fight about online. Uh, I, I was really happy when he came out with this because people seemed to only like fight about me and then you know he took a little bit uh, of a few of those punches you know, over the last few months. So thank you for that Preston. Uh, and he also runs a giant home inspection company out of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina and he does a lot of volume and he's going to tell you how. Preston, come on up. Thank you, Preston. Thank you. All right, well thank you. And uh, the pants are from around that way. Uh, most of the time the inspectors get it, but uh, when I go into Target or Walmart, they're not so sure. Anymore. Security, you better just, watch this guy. Just use the right arrow. Right, the right arrow puts it yep. forward. Yeah, if you can be remembered and embarrass your kids, that's a win-win. Uh, well, I want to start with telling you the worst business advice passed down through history. And you've probably heard this statement. How many of you have ever heard that statement? Uh, build, a better build a better mouse trap, and the world will be the path to your door. How many of you guys have heard that? Something like that. Yeah, I'm not going to say, the problem is it's only about half right. <laughs> you do need to build a better mousetrap, and that's very important. But you need to build a better highway to your door. In fact, you need to build a couple of highways to your door. I would recommend building a couple of freeways to your door. Um, so that's what my presentation is about, to complete what uh, Mr. Ralph Waldo Emerson, I had to write it and I washed my hands. I was like, oh, what was it? Um, that's what he said. So we're going to make his statement. I think I want to change it to build a better mousetrap and build a whole lot of paths to your door. So let's, uh, the right arrow keys that were said. All right, so first, build a better mousetrap. It's very important. Go to all these continuing education like we talked about, Kenny Hart, those guys like that. It's great to, to have a lot of education, you know, be a really good home inspector. Have a lot of USPs like warranties. Uh, we fix the small stuff, 24 uh, hour online scheduling. You know, I know you guys have some USPs, you know, that's unique selling points. And basically the thought is if you had you and all of your competitors standing in a, a straight, you know, in a line like this, and I said, all right, how many of you guys have digital reports with, uh, you know, did, or with digital pictures? Take a step forward. Everybody takes a step forward. How many of you guys, uh, you know, have super key access to, and what happens, you know, how many of you guys have warranties? And what you want to be is the last person taking a step forward. At some point you have something that all the other people don't. That's important. That is building the better mousetrap. Uh, and Nathan has a whole lot of things you can do that uh, will help you build that better mousetrap. Now let's talk about um, building the roads to our door. Um, I basically 
use three ways, and probably a lot of you guys use the same. Uh, direct to this public or search engine optimization. Basically things like Google, Yahoo, stuff like that. People finding you on the internet. Um, the next one is social media. And when we talk about social media, we're talking about Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, YouTube, different types of social media platforms that can help you get inspections. These are more highways to your uh, <coughs> mousetrap. Um, marketing to realtors. How many people here market to realtors? I do. Absolutely do. And I'll talk about a couple of things uh, there that I do. And then the last thing I want to talk about is a fourth option that uh, Dave Klima and I came up with because I want, again, I want as many highways coming to my mousetrap as I possibly can get. So let's go to the first one there, search engine optimization. Um, and there's a lot of people who know a lot more about this than me. <laughs> but um, I do know a couple of things, you know, keyword planners, you know, you need to talk to somebody who knows a little bit about it. The one thing that I really know, you know, you got to optimize your pages. But the biggest thing that I know is you got to have a lot of backlinks, backlinks to your website. Yep. Um, it, absolutely. That's what raises you up. You know, in the old days, everybody named their company AAA or Acme or Aardvark. Why'd they name it that? Oh, you, you have the yellow pages, right. Well, nobody uses the yellow pages anymore. Everybody goes on Google. Home inspection, your city. That's what it is. So the idea is you want to come up really high in those search engines because nobody goes to page two or three or anything like that. One thing that I will tell you that helps has helped me a lot is YouTube videos um, because you know Google owns YouTube. In fact, if you got your computer or okay, you got your phone, go uh, go on YouTube and go to HI Carolina. That's my um, YouTube channel. And the reason I'm telling you this, look at um, some of you, you'll pull up some of my videos. And you know, you, you guys could do all kinds of interesting videos, but here's the, the, the real, the secret, I guess. If you go into the description of my videos, you'll see in the description, I start off with HTTP semicolon slash slash my website. That makes that go live. That's a live link on there. And then you say, you know, hey, we're looking at a house today and you know, we're looking at some pot of post beetle damage, some termite damage, see these tubes, blah, blah, blah. And then I put my other website at the end. You just type in HTTP, well, it becomes a live link. So what happens is everybody who watches that video, that's another link to my website that boosts me up when people Google. So I guess my point of this is do videos and make sure you put your website on the front and end of that description. And if you're on my page, go ahead and subscribe there if you want to. That'll help me out a little bit. And I'll subscribe back. Um, but that, that's pretty much uh, SEO, and there's a lot more to it, but, you know, we don't have time. You can track your data. With I'm sorry, I'm sorry. One second. I'm going to have him just slap my butt off back there while he's trying to plug this into the computer. No, I got it. <laughs> would you like a click? Oh, yeah, that would help. All right, sure. <laughs> Um, but you can analyze your data with uh, Google Analytics or Moz Pro. Uh, can tell you where all your backlinks are coming from. There you go. All right. So while we're at it, if you've got your phones out, this is what I want you to do. Google your city and then home inspector. <coughs> Houston home inspector. Or, you know, I, I don't know the towns around here, but uh, <laughs> give me another city. <laughs> Fort Worth Home Inspector. No, no, Cypress, uh, oh. Houston, uh, Cypress, Pearland. Yeah, any of those. Just the, the city and then the Home Inspector or Home Inspection. And then what I want you to look at is it's, it's not working. Uh, Nathan. Go ahead. Yeah, see, it worked. No, no, don't worry about this. That's okay. Well, I did Washington, D.C. home inspector, but what I want you to look at when you Google that, you know, first you'll see the maps, right? Well, you'll see the pay-per-clicks, the ad, the paid ads, you see that? And then you'll see the maps, and you'll see the people in the maps. If you're in there, congratulations. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. But uh, that's great, and here's where we really want to be in that organic search. Because, you know, like if I order pizza, I know the people in the paid ads, they paid to be there, they could have opened yesterday and paid. I'm going to the organic because I know it takes work to get there. Here's the thing I don't like though. How many of you folks go down to that organic? Do you see things like Home Advisor, Yelp, Thumbtack? It kind of ticks me off because I spent a lot of time building backlinks and writing articles and all this. And now here comes you know all these pay to play outfits, so to speak. Kind of ticks me off. Um, and you know, anybody here do the Home Advisor thing? I don't. Do they call you? All the time. All the time, yeah. They want to sell you leads. And they sell that lead three times, too, by the way. Yeah, hell yeah. 
Uh, in my market, it depends on your market. I called, I was just curious. So how much is a lead? It's $19. So you pay $19, they sell it three times. And you know, you're calling somebody blindly and they're not exactly sure how you, how you got their number either. So, right. I mean, if you can convert it, good for you, but I would rather have it myself on there. That That's the problem with, man, this thing is, it's, I'm, I'm not getting it. Hang on with the arrows. All right. Thank you. Well, of course, now it goes. And that, that was just showing you the same thing there. Um, but my point on that is, I still like Google. I still think it's great to do backlinks, videos, and stuff like that. But I'm worried that some of these pay-per-click people will, uh, or um, pay-to-play pay places might be invading on that road or causing some damage to my highway there. Uh, yeah. The next one, social media. I love social media. It's basically free. Now, it does take a lot of time. Um, how many people here do Facebook? Facebook? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Instagram? Not quite as much. Um, it's kind of like a, an age thing. You know, I'm about to turn 50. You know, my mom does Facebook. I do Facebook. Probably about everybody 10 years younger than me do Facebook. But from there on down, it's like Instagram and Snapchat, it seems like. <laughs> my kids did Facebook, and they said, oh, well, once Dad started doing it, it wasn't cool anymore. <laughs> um, but you got to think, even those 15, 16-year-old kids are going to be 24 and buying a house, you know, a couple of years from now. So I want to be where the eyeballs are. You should be in the eyeball business, like Gary Vaynerchuk says. So what about social media? Let's go over one more page here. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ones, but the four that I concentrate are really the three, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I'm trying to do Snapchat, but I, it's just, I can't quite, that whole, what do you call it, keep your streaks or something? It just seems like a lot of work. <laughs> Anybody here have teenage kids? Oh, well, let's talk about it. Social media is social. It's like a big old party. You know, it's like a cocktail party. And you want to behave on there like you would be at a party. And think about it. If you went to a cocktail party and you went in there and the first thing you said is, and what's your name? Mike. Mike. Hey, Mike, you know, who do you use for life insurance? You know, I'd like to sit down with you. I think I, I think I can save you some money if I look over your policy. And then I went over, what's your name? Dan. Dan. If Dan, what, you, you got a wife or girlfriend? No, uh, wife. Well, what's with Marla? I go over to Dan's wife, Marla, and say, hey, Marla, uh, you know, I got some Tupperware in my car. You know, it keeps food sealed. I'd like to show you that. And then I go over to you and I tell you, well, pretty soon, what would the people at the party be thinking? <laughs> Who invited this guy? Yeah, I mean, please, get yeah, rid of him. Yeah. But you, if you think Play about him. it, yeah, if you think about with those pants. I know, right? If you think about it, sometimes that's the way we behave, though, when all we put on there is, I do home inspections, I do this, I do that. We are that Tupperware guy, you know. We are that, 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 uh, that guy. So we don't want to be that. You want to be 80% social, 20% business. So what I post all the time is informational stuff. That's good. Crazy pictures. And I know you got them. I mean, golly, you guys see the craziest stuff. Uh, be fun. Be informative. You know, Radon Awareness Month, stuff like that. Nothing controversial ever. And I also just ask questions sometimes. Say, hey, uh, you know, my wife and I are going out tonight. Where's the best place to get barbecue? I had 160 comments on that question. So what am I doing? A lot of people be saying, well, man, you're just wasting your time. No, you're not. You're being top of mind. You know, you're, you're in the conversation. So when they think about it, and sooner or later, they know you do home inspections. You're in the conversation. So you, you'll get a lot of home inspections off of that. Instagram is kind of the same thing. Uh, it's just more pictures. You know, and you just want interesting pictures. Um, and you're welcome to follow me. I'm Preston Sandlin, Inspector Crazy Pants. Uh, I actually own InspectorCrazyPants.com. I was gonna be the house whisperer, but that was 10 grand. Inspector Crazy Pants was $10. So. <laughs> That's how it started. So anyway, <laughs> just something to be remembered. Um, but anyway, I, I do like social media. That's another road to our better mouse trap. Um, man, leave this thing and watch it. It'll catch up in a minute. Do you, do you ask questions? Do you use a personal social media? Do you do business? That's uh, a great Facebook. question. I do both. I do both. Um, and I use them for different things. Here's the problem with the business, and I recommend you guys do both. And friend as many realtors as you can. If you really, really want to talk about politics, make a different person. <laughs> Don't put any realtors on there. But um, so I friend all the realtors that I can. Here's the problem with the business page. Google knows its business, and when you boost a post, not everybody. I mean, I'm sorry. When you put a post up, nobody, not many people see it unless you boost it. Now, when you put a personal one on there, it everybody sees it but you gotta be interesting and stuff. If you really, really wanna make a, you might wanna write this down. If you really, really wanna to touch a bunch of realtors, do a, um, a group page. 
do some sort of group page. Like, uh, and what I did was I got together with a couple of other vendors, not home inspectors, a mortgage person, something else, and we have Charlotte Real Estate Resources. And we all put helpful stuff on there when the rates go down, but we're not salesy, we're just helpful. And you invite a bunch of realtors on there, but every time you post something to the group, everybody sees it. It's, it's an exposure in their feed. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the downside of a business page is it doesn't show up in their feed unless they boost it. Where on your personal, it will show up on their feed, and so will it in the group as well. So that's pretty cool. And another thing, if you get together with a, another group of uh, vendors, like mortgage people and stuff like that, you can leverage those relationships. You know, they you introduce them to your people, they introduce you to your people. Just you know, just not another home inspector. Uh, marketing realtors. How many people do that? You said you do that. Anybody take candy? I, you know, I take candy um, out to realtors. I put flyers in their boxes. Um, this is probably where I get about ninety percent of my business. I have some crazy flyers. Uh, <clears throat> Homeinspectorflyers.com. Wink, wink. Uh, shameless plug for my little company that I make. Um, but I put flyers in the box. I go to 36 offices weekly and put candy in that little candy house there. And I put flyers in the box because I want to leave a footprint. Because a lot of times you have like six agents in the office that eat all the candy. Um, so I want the rest of them to know that I was there. And then I'll put a couple of flyers up uh, near the box so that they connect the dots on that. And I always try to do something a little crazy, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, some sales, copywriting, that sort of thing. Um, who wants to get lucky every time? Might be a little risque, but my pants go well with that, don't you think? <laughs> but then I, uh, then another one is Nathan makes some flyers, and uh, these are really good. Um, I, I talked to Nathan, and uh, we sort of brainstormed. He'll probably talk about that a little bit more. He's got some really good ones with some of his protection plans, and he's got these two-sided ones. And, you know, and the good thing about Nathan, I, I, I get some of these flyers from Nathan. You know, I'm trying to do something new every week. Um, and these are the brochures uh, Nathan's folks make for me. I'll tell you what's awesome about this, and I sponsor a lot of CE classes, so I give these out at every CE classes. And sometimes these CE classes have 12 people in them, and sometimes they have over 300. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, is when it gets closer to the deadline, they get closer to the 300. <laughs> so the great thing is I run out of them quick, and I call Nathan. It's almost like Nathan Prime. I'm like, Nathan, can you send me 10K of those things? And, uh, man, I have them in, like, four days. I mean, they're, there's my box right there. I like having my marketing stuff just ready to go. But, you know, constantly hitting offices. Um, I know realtors aren't in the offices as much as they used to be, but they still are there, and it still is worthwhile. Um, let's go on. You said you did about 35 a week. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you for bringing that up. So I have what's called Tier 1 and Tier 2 offices. Tier 1 are the ones I hit every week, uh, about 35 or 36 of those. And basically, you know, my qualifications for those are they got to have 60 agents or more, and I got to be able to get to the boxes because I want to put those things in, in the candy stuff. And sometimes you might not be able to do it right away. You sort of got to keep bringing candy, keep bringing candy, and sooner or later the gatekeeper's going to like you. <laughs> and eventually they'll just be like, yeah, come on back there, you know. So you got to kind of work on it. Now, um, I have tier two offices that I go once a month. That's basically everybody else. And I'll just bring them like candy in a little candy bowl. And, you know, I can't get to the box or something, but I do want to visit them. And I like to leave them with more sticky things. And what I mean sticky is things that stick around a little bit longer, like mouse pads, calendars, things like that. Because uh, I want a presence in every office. Now, the big thing is bringing food and presentations. Anybody do presentations here? Oh, absolutely. The big thing about presentations, depend on what type of presentation you're doing. If you're doing a lunch and learn, you know, you've got a little more time. But if you're doing a sales meeting, they really, you only got like five to ten minutes. Right. And, and less is more. I, in fact, I call it the five B's of presentation. It's uh, bring food, be fun, be entertaining, be educational, be seated, be invited back. Maybe it's six B's. You might want to write those down. <laughs> but less is more. Um, I always tell this story. One time I went to this thing and there were a couple of us sponsored it. And the duck cleaning guy went in front of me. Oh, my. God, he got up there and he went through the entire process step by step, of, like he was teaching a class to other duck cleaning people. And you know, all the real estate, I mean, I could just feel it in the room. We're all just like, oh, you're killing me, dude, you're killing me. So finally, when I got up there, I was like, hey, I brought y'all food. Home Inspection Carolina, give us a call. And they were so thankful because they were all like, oh my God, please, thank you for not talking so much. But my point is, don't be that duck cleaning guy. You got to be fun, uh, entertaining, brief, and be seated. All right, so this brings me down to um, the fourth highway that I'm, I'm working on and Dave Klemer working on. Um, 
you know, we are heavily reliant on realtors and Google, and they change their analytics, and then, you know, worry about the, the, the realtors if all these, you know, e-buyer thing takes hold. You know, we're, I need another road. So what we came up with is inspectedhouses.com. And honestly, it is about pre-inspections, but it's also just a, Nathan, what, what did you call it? A text lead generation? It's a, a text message lead and funnel system. Correct. That's what we really need to name it. So basically, just, just to uh, an uncomplicate things. How many folks have seen a sign out in the yard that realtors have? For more information, text this number, right? And I've always thought, that's pretty cool. How can we tap into that? You know, and uh, so that's what we did. And, and you know what happens when they text in, they don't just get your number. From that number, they can pull who owns the phone, your address, all that stuff. So it's lead capture. And I thought, man, realtors could do that. Home inspectors need to be able to do that. So that's what we did. We, we got together with one of those companies and we kind of built our own. So what it is, like, we can do a pre-inspection or we can give any kind of, let me see if I can make this simple, some sort of bait. Think about it that way. What is bait that a potential buyer would want? How about a home inspection checklist? How about radon information or info on this house? And if you want to see how it works, pull out your phone and text info1 to that number. This is my number. If, if anybody joins this program, you'll have a number, but you can create your own code. So I got info1 on that one. And basically what happens is you text, you get information about the house, and then I can capture you know, all of the uh, potential buyer's info. So now I got the phone number, name, and potentially the address, depending on if it can pull the phone records or not, of a person who's going to be buying a house and is going to need a home inspection. There's also a CRM on the back end of this where I can text them up to four times a timed release of useful stuff. You don't want to bug people. I mean, that'll, but think about it. If you were buying a house, what would be useful information? Checklist. How about information about the schools? Um, the crime thing, as long as it's good. Be good if it was bad. <laughs> kind of that with the schools too. But if you want, if you want to text info one to 704-275-9470 or text radon. I have one where I set up, you know, the EPA thing, the radon uh, the EPA uh, booklet. I forget what it's called. Yeah. It's free. And you I got the PDF. I hooked it up to my website. And then so what happened is I hooked that code up to it. So you text right to my website to get free radon information. But I also want to show you one with an actual pre-inspection. Yes, sir. So is that like a yard sign you would put yep. in? So, Absolutely. So in Carolina, you're allowed to give away information on houses you've inspected? Well, it's, no, I get the buyer's, uh, uh, the seller's permission. Consent. Permission, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they're trying to sell their house, so anything, and usually, you know, they well, might be one. you've done the inspection, but in Texas anyway, you know, your client is the buyer. And right, buyer, right, right. The buyer would have to give you yeah. Well, I'll tell you about the the uh, the pre-inspection in a minute because you can do a pre-inspection. Pre yeah. inspection. Yeah. Let me. I'll, I'll answer that if you'll give me just a second. I will answer. And I don't know if this thing's gonna work. Good. Good. I have to just keep going to. Um. That's another one you can text. Um. And I'm I'm gonna answer your question in just a second. Um. You could do uh. You know, 90 day warranty. That's something else of value. You find out about text save one. So what I want to show you is on the back end of this. If you, if you have this system, this is what you're going to get on your dashboard. And I know you can't see it very well. It's not focused too well. But I'm getting all these people who text in, um, and it shows what code I made off of it. Now, I know that's a little confusing now, but it, it's, it's actually pretty easy. I had a FISBO that I did a pre-inspection on, and I'm going to explain that. I know there's some legalities you're worried about because I was too. Um, I got 12 leads off of that FISBO and converted three home inspections. No realtor at, at all. You know, oh, I know that guy. How'd you let this guy in? You better, did he well, get through the metal detector? I had to tell him where to go. He <laughs> the wrong side of town or something. I don't know. Did, he, did he make the weapons yeah. check? <laughs> yeah. The other cool thing, and I'm still going to answer your question. I am, I promise. Um, if I can pull enough information about the person, we can also check to see a uh, uh, sex, sex offender list. That's actually free. Um, but if you want to check your criminal background check, I think that's like $15 or something like that, but you can't. And let me, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Let me answer your question. I'll, I'll tell you something else about it. So this, I'm just quickly go through this. It's just loading up a property. And I know you can barely read that. I could show you how to do it. 
I loaded up the pictures with permission. Uh, I can put pictures in it and uh, I can load up the inspection report. And I did, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like here. Let me just go, this is the drip campaign where I can send four texts after they text it. Um, this is the one I wanna to go to. So this is a live one I have right here. And I know it's small, but I, I would love you guys to text it so you see what it looks like. Um, so I did a pre-inspection on this house, right? All right, so here's how it works. The seller paid me like normal, okay? Then I load up the report. Now, they, they've been explained how this works, and they agreed to it, kind of like Carfax. I load up the report to inspectedhouses.com, and I attach it to this code. I can make the code. My number says the same. I attach it to Home 8, right? That report is for sale for nineteen ninety five. Every time that report is sold, that money goes back to the seller. It's their report. We're just facilitating them selling their report to offset the cost. You, you with me so far? Now, they're probably not going to recover $500. But if they sell it three times, that's 60 bucks. So any potential buyer could buy the uh, pre-listing report. It's more about qualifying the buyer, really. Let's right, right, right. Okay. Now, to answer your question. I thought about it backwards. I was like, so what's all the ways we, you know, could get sued or something like that? And I said, well, ideally what I'd like to do is the seller load up their own report so that they can't say, hey, you loaded up that report. My house didn't sell because blah, blah, blah. I know they're, so what we do is we load up the report. It doesn't go live until an email goes to them and they have to read and sign off that they agree. And, and then it goes live. Does that make sense? And we retract the personal information. Because we don't want contractors buying it and say, oh, yeah, you need a new roof, you know, and call the people. Mm -hmm. so, so that um, works on pre-listing. Right, right. But, again, it doesn't have to be a pre-listing. It could be, you know, a, a home inspection discount rate on information. It's, it's a text lead generation system, but it can also be a uh, pre-listing inspection uh, system. Uh, but if it's a potential buyer that go through with the transaction, they can still access it. Right, right. So, but here's the beauty of it. When I go in to present this to realtors, they love it. What do we do as home inspectors a lot of times when we go in to present to realtors? I got this certification, I'm great. I, I literally used to take a water heater apart and put it back together <laughs> when I was younger. I was the duct cleaning guy. People were like, oh my God, you're killing me, dude. It would have been a great presentation to home inspectors, but realtors don't care. I mean, think about it. If you're a realtor, you're like, look, I know you brought food. <laughs> and we have to listen to you, but you're killing me, dude. Give me something I can use. So, so I said, look, this is my presentation. I'm going to give you my presentation to realtors right now. I got five minutes, right? So I go up and I say, hey, um, how many of you guys ever had a deal go south? So, yeah, every realtor, yeah. And I said, most uh, home uh, realtors I asked that, they say either the home inspection or the, uh, what's the valuation called? Uh, appraisal. Appraisal is what makes it go sideways. And there's some other things, but those are the two big things. I said, I can't do anything about the appraisal, but you know, I've always thought the home inspection, no deal should ever go south because of the home inspection. You know what it is? It's the timing of when the inspection's done. Because when you, people buy a house, there's a compromise, right? The seller comes down, the buyer comes up, and both, both parties compromise. And they both feel like, that's all I can do. I'm not coming down anymore. And the buyer's like, I'm not going up anymore. I paid too much. And then you come to the home inspection, lo and behold, there's 10 grand worth of problems. Neither party wants to come up or come down because they've already done it once. Nobody wants to compromise twice. But if that inspection was done pre to the financial negotiation, those things would have been accounted for, or the deal wouldn't have happened, and people wouldn't have wasted their time. Now, I know what you're thinking. Two problems with pre-inspections. They've been around for a while. I've tried to do them. Jim's tried to do them. Two problems. Two problems. Sellers don't want to pay for them. And the other thing is, seller's like, well, why am I going to pay for somebody to come call my baby ugly? And then I fix all this stuff. And then the buyer's going to come in and bring somebody to call my baby ugly again. And I got to fix some stuff again. No, thank you. Okay, let me, let, me, let me handle those two objections. That's why we decided to sell the reports to handle that first objection. So that we can compensate or offset the cost a little bit. Because it's the seller's report. Hey, they should be able to make a little money off of it. It's not, I'm don't, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you and tell them it's gonna cover the cost of the report, but they might get a little bit back on it. Objection number two. What we're trying to do is keep the deal from going sideways. Big items, not little small stuff. I can go behind any home inspector and any inspector can come behind me and find small stuff. But I always tell as a company, if you find something that was two grand or more that me or one of my guys missed, I'm gonna refund your money for the pre-inspection because we should have found that. 
I always say, you know, if two inspectors inspect the same house and there were three major problems, both inspectors should find those. But their list of minor problems is going to be different. So it's just setting expectations. Of course that inspector's going to find stuff. But it shouldn't be, you know, a rotten shower, you know, shower pan, the whole rotten thing. Right. If that, but if you really think about it, pre-inspections have less liability. Because right. really the only thing that they're totally out, I mean, in a court of law, what have they actually lost? Just what they paid the inspection. Because right. they still own the house. They own it all up. Does that make sense? So anyway, that's how that works. Um, you know, we, uh, it's a lead capture system. Uh, it's inspectedhouses.com. And it's just another road to get to your better mousetrap. Um, you know, I don't say, I kept forgetting these things. Don't worry. You know, I'm not one of those that says that, uh, hey, you should do everything the way I do it. Um, I think there's potential for all kinds of things. You guys probably do some stuff too. But these are some things that I've got that's working. Um, but uh, the four roads again, you know, your SEO, um, direct to the public, social media, marketing to realtors, and now I'm getting into lead capture. And if you're interested in that fourth row, uh, road, to take out, uh, check out uh, inspectedhouses.com. And my last message to you is don't be the duck cleaning guy. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you've got a, uh, a seller that you've done an inspection for. They put out the sign. Somebody goes on. They buy the report for nineteen ninety-five. How does that seller get that? Oh, at the end of the month, it, it goes to them. It goes into, uh, I forget the name of it. Uh, there's a, a thing, but at the, like I think the 30th of each month, any, any import, it goes back to the, because we have their address. We can either put it in their bank account if they want to do that, or we can just mail it to them because we've got the address. Okay. But it's at the end of each month. So you've got to check it. Yeah, the system does. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, thank you guys for your time. Hey, you stay up here for a second, no, yeah. thank you. But thank not you. in the way of that, because I just want to show everybody. Oh, so so watch this. It just works so smooth and well. well I mean, unbelievable. You put batteries in. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's let's go to a couple of things because it's a reality check on something. That text message lead generation stuff. Uh, honestly, it has two uh, best results and purposes, in my opinion, and what I've seen from from guys doing this all over the country. He's got a lot of users now. Uh, you know, they got pretty famous pretty quick. Number one was creating that sign that had the number of text this for you know 50 bucks off your home inspection or whatnot and it's right next to all those real estate agent signs yeah. well guess what happens when they go out there and put up all those signs it's because they're there already right they're uh, making the, the rounds or they have a company that's out doing it but it still catches their eye when they go out and they see all those signs along those corners because it's not every corner in town right it's like you know five or six busy intersections where nobody has claimed it right, right? that sort of thing right. yeah i put them out there with those the, the you know homes under 400 whatever and i'm like yeah, 50 yeah, dollar discount where, so wherever station. you see the other ones is and and just keep some in your truck wherever you see the other ones go out and place them now here's the thing they have to be throwaways because there's a people from the city that go around and collect them every so often yeah. and just yeah. put them in the garbage stuff <laughs> and they do it with political yeah. campaign signs they do it with the we'll, we'll buy our ugly house signs all of them yeah. uh and, and that's just a good placement and remember, your ears perk up when you hear certain things, right? So if if you're listening to uh, the radio and you hear something about Zillow, you hear it and you listen to it, right? But if you ask like the regular consumers, 99 out of 100 of them, if you ask them about Zillow, they really don't know anything about it. This is a company that has to spend a billion dollars a year just to keep in front of people to maybe be involved in one to one and a half percent of real estate transactions. Uh, a kid from Carmel with not even close to that budget got involved in 20% of real estate transactions. So they, they need to fire somebody now. But the, but the point of that is, is that they have to keep there. And, and when they're there, they're really perking up the ears of us and real estate agents and real estate agents are buying their leads because of it. Let's go to another thing that is another purpose for this. It's a, a reason to stand in front of real estate agents and give a presentation and another reason to come in and see them. Hey, I'd like to show you this system. I'd like to talk to you about pre-listing inspections, and here's the way I'm going to talk to you about it. Preston and Dave, even the two founders of this thing, it's called Inspected Houses, which implies it's mostly for houses that have been inspected. Um, you know, go in front of real estate agents. They, they have presented it to a thousand agents and created a hundred clients on the buyer side of transactions. Right, right. You know, because they heard them, they become an authority, they become a business partner. You know, if you ask me any question about something in your business and I give you an answer where you go, wow, 
he's either a supreme bullshit or he knows and something and wants to help me. That's going to make me a resource for you, right? So this turns you into a resource for them. But still to this day, percentage of pre-listing inspections versus your uh, your buyer's ins inspections, your typical oh, real estate transaction. Yeah, a lot lower. Lot, I mean, like single digit, right? Yeah. 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 So it's always going to be that. It's one of those many highways. Um, but Preston does in his business something huge. And I want you to uh, pull out. I left in front of you some flyers uh, and brochures. One of them is, did you not get the whole pack of chairs? All right. One of them is this Home Inspection Carolina brochure. This is more or less a template. So if you remember that uh, card I pointed out, if you'd like to have this kind of template built for your company, in fact, I'd like to do it for all of you. I'd like to test right now something that we've been cooking up at uh, RWS headquarters. And for all of you that are here that are already in our you know, you know, know, user category, that's okay, I'll honor this deal for all of you. Uh, if you want a brochure designed that has this full package offering, the message that he's using to create $3 million worth of home inspection business, completely crushing all of his competitors yeah. in the Charlotte market, I can build it on this template. And here's the way that we change it. We put in a house that is like from your market. We put in your logo. If you don't have a logo, we'll design a logo for you. We put your phone number here, your website on the back. You know, this page more or less stays the same. The only piece of content you have to do is right here, this verbiage. Because I'm not going to write that verbiage for you. I mean, I, get, I mean, I'm certainly not going to. I suppose one of our people could. But you're going to do that one better. That's that's the, the heart and soul of the, the message, right? This is the only thing you wrote when you sent it to us pretty much right there. Um, so if you do that, it becomes something that will actually get done. It will get implemented and we'll have a launch. So I would love to design a brochure for you like this. And all you have to do is at the bottom of that card, write brochure. When I say I'll design it, I'll design it. I'll give you a PDF and I'll print 250 of them. Sarah, write this down. Uh, I'll print 250 of them and pay FedEx charges to send them to your office to distribute. Awesome. Free, okay? All of it. Now we're not going to draw for that thing because I just gave them all away. Oh, yeah. What? I have one. Can I bring it to you? And you can look at it and see if this. Well, you can, but this is based on a template, right? Uh -huh. So if you already have one, it probably has that message right there. Uh -huh. So we can kind of extract that, bring it in. But we're largely going by template. Not because your thing isn't brilliant. It might be the most awesome brochure ever created in the history of home inspection. But did you, did you do more than $3 million in sales last year? Okay, this did. And and here's the thing, this thing did at a huge metric. Okay, so you gotta get it out there, see a return, you know, talk about things in, in the right way. And how many of these are you passing out in a month? I don't know. I just get down to the last box and how many hundreds? <laughs> or is it thousands it's per thousands month? Thousands. Thousands <laughs> per month. Wow. And he he acted like he calls me for this. He doesn't call me. He texts me, "Hey, I need five thousand brochures." And then the next day he goes, "Hey, can you make it 10? <laughs> and and we were we were sitting around, uh, you know, our our uh, council table at our office, our little boardroom where we talk about things and like how it would affect our clients, how it affects the real estate market, that sort of thing. Because you know, we're involved in a lot of transactions, and we were considering building a fake dollhouse in our warehouse with uh, you know fake defects in it. Uh, but instead, we, we brought in a quarter million dollars worth of print equipment so that we could really help you guys out. Uh, and you can go to the Internazi House of Horrors to see Yeah, yeah, better. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. uh, I, I have to get that one on camera. Uh, so we're going to do that for you. And, um, and, and then you can feel what it's like to do what Preston does. Let me tell you something else Preston does. He does flyers in addition to brochures. So brochures are kind of, you're always in the office. Sticky. They always have a spot. Yeah. They're in your candy bowls. They're in, you know, in the boxes. So, because sure. this is how agents recommend somebody to their client. But then there's the, I need a new message every month. And that's where this stuff <laughs> came from. He showed a couple of examples. These are short messages. This was not my idea. This was Preston Sandlin's idea. He said, I need a flyer that just talks about radon and sells radon. And I said, well, what kind of message would you like on it? He says, well, you know, we have the radon protection plan because we use your 
full package. So if we test it low and it comes back high later, we'll put in a mitigation system. It's you know basically a guaranteed rate on test. Uh, I said, okay, well, we can build that and we'll build this simple message. And then, you know, it puts in your, in your logo. Now, this doesn't need to be like really custom designed for every, you know, home inspection company. It just needs to have your name and information and have a message that, that hit, you know, hits somebody in the face and you come with a new one every month. And whether you put out 100 or 200 or 500 or zero and just put it out on online, this is all built into our systems. You can log in, go to resources page and download it, simple. Uh, you can also download this one. This is kind of my, uh, my favorite now, this advanced inspection standards uh, flyer because it points to a problem in our industry, which is our, our standards. And I wanna talk about our standards for just a second and uh, I'll tell you with Preston, and I'll give you, uh, talk to you about this last thing and then uh, go to some other stuff and bring up our next guest. You know, once a month I'm on the phone with Preston, because at, at least once a month, because he does thousands and thousands of transactions per year. And, you know, a client has a problem. I know, tough to believe. <laughs> and they call and they want to, you know, say that he missed something or, you know, that this broke or whatever. Uh, you know, your response, if you're Preston and you're building this big company, which means you not only have to bring in new clients, but you got to kind of keep the old ones too, probably a good idea, yeah. is to have a great response. And that great response is, sorry, we don't, we're only required to check one inspe uh, electrical outlet. Have you ever said that to somebody and said, sorry, we were not required to check that electrical outlet? Okay, no, because that's ridiculous, even though our standard says that. Uh, and you know, how many in this room have ever paid for an issue for your clients that exceeded the inspection fee by show of hands? Okay, so like all of us. Okay, good, well that's what I needed. Thank you, Preston. Right. Here's my, my point, is that you guys go well above the standards of practice. And there's three major like wrong things with the standards of practice. Number one is the representative number of outlets. Is anybody in here not check every single accessible outlet with your three dollar X Tech? Anybody? No. Okay. So we all do that. So that's like a fake standard, and that means the standard was only there to, um, you know, cover our asses. Really. Does anybody not check a window because you've checked another similar window in the house and said, oh, "I've seen one like that before. I don't need to check that window. It doesn't matter if it's leaking, rotted, or or uh, doesn't have a lock on it and it's totally cracked." broken glass everywhere, I don't need to check it because I checked a representative number of windows. Nobody in here does that, right? So why do we have, and this is like the big one, oh, I'll give you the third standard that's amazing to me, you know, that, that we can step over um, dead rats and not mention the rats. You know, according to our standards of practice, you can do that. Now, I, I, it, I'm unclear on the interpretation of the standards of practice as it pertains to live rats because the standards of practice references uh, evidence of rodents. In the attic. Well, and right, and an actual rodent is not evidence of rodents, it's an actual rodent. So like, do you, there need to be like 15 of them there? Do you have to have names for them? You know, at what point is it, you know, like a rodent party that should probably be reported? <laughs> but if you walked into a house, uh, and sorry about the m confusion on where we, where we were, I don't know how that happened. Uh, but if you walked into a house and, you, you know, it was a foot tall, pile of dead rats you would probably say something right yeah of course of course you better i mean you should be sued for that but that's not a part of our standards here's another thing that inspectors do is they limit you know absent a you know a, a warranty document that says we're going to cover xx and y what is the limitation of liability for most inspectors it's their inspection fee so they want to have a contract that says that they can check one outlet one window, step over a bunch of dead rats on the way there, and then guarantee that whole inspection up to the cost of the inspection fee only if they miss $10,000 worth of shit. And yet they want more money to do it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. So we came out with this thing we call the Advanced Inspection Standards, and it's really simple. It's right in front of you. It's on the back of that flyer, and it says that we're going to check all accessible outlets, and we did this as a supplement. So whatever your standard is, if you're, if you're from Texas, then you, know, you probably use the Texas license standards, right? Uh, but you may reference also the InterNACHI standards or the ASHI standards. And if you're from another state, as a couple of you here are, then you might use a, uh, an association standards. 
we went down the path of rewriting, writing a whole new standard. And then we said, you know what? We're going to leave that to the associations. We're going to leave that to the licensing entities. That's a mess, and we don't want to have those kind of debates. Instead, we made a supplement and said, this goes on top of those standards. So we abide by those standards. In addition to that, we check all accessible outlets that are free of obstructions and within reach. That's fair, right? That's what we do. It's reality. We'll check all the accessible doors and windows, and they have to be free of obstructions. I do not consider a drape to be an obstruction, by the way. I have heard that argument from home, a home inspector, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me, dude. Uh, evaluate the basic functionality of main kitchen appliances. I mean, this is not hard. I've had people that say, well, I don't check them. I said, well, gosh, those are like the most expensive mechanical things inside the house. You know, I, I was looking at a refrigerator for my new place. It was like $9,000. You're not going to open the door and just see if it's cold. <laughs> it would be nice, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, run a disposal to ensure it operates. Um, you stick your finger in to make sure the blades are spinning. You know? um, ensure all, don't do that, please. Uh, ensure all oven and stove elements turn on, just all of them. You know, just turn them on once if they heat up. I'm not saying they have to meet the uh, Whirlpool standard for medium temperature, you know, like. Doesn't need to do that. Check exhaust fans. Note visible or apparent suspected mold in excess of two square feet. That's not hard. Let's go to the next one. This is where it gets a little harder. Note rodents. I think we all will note rodents. Uh, check for recalls on appliances. It's free. It's easy. You can take pictures of the appliance serial numbers with your phone. We send it off to people in other countries. We're providing jobs there. They pay at least $3 an hour, last time I checked. And that's like a lot. They can buy like beachfront property in their countries for that. Uh, and they're going to put those in. We're going to find those. Issue a warranty against the roof leaks, which are the things that cause you liability anyway. We just did a, a full audit of claims with one of the big three E&O providers in home inspection. Users of warranties had one-third the claims of non-warranty users, and they're about to adjust their e &O rates way down as a result of it. Uh, Note the age of HVAC systems. Test the pressure-activated auto-reverse. Oh, excuse me, I skipped one. Note the current water pressure at the house. That's for you. That's more for you than for them. Put a pressure water pressure gauge on. Take a picture of the damn thing. All right? Simple. Well, then, you know, but other people listening here aren't necessarily from Texas. It's required here from Texas, in Texas. Why aren't you doing it, Illinois? Right? Okay, so th that's good. Here's the last one. Test the pressure activated garage, the auto reverse, right? Now, that's one where sometimes people will go, oh, I don't know if I want to do that one. Anyone here not do, do the auto reverse pressure test? Okay, good. We're in a good room. Let me tell you, I was just in a room with uh, 200 people, brought this up here, six people raised their hand. <laughs> I had to write down their names you know, uh, uh, and said, oh, I will not do that. And of course, what's their reason? They broke one. They broke one. It was a, it was a cheap you know, aluminum door that folded on them. Right. And, and I said, okay, well, let's balance that. So just in case one of you runs into this problem and at some point has to buy a garage door, um, that garage door is not going to be the most expensive garage door. You're not going to get a solid wood garage door bending on you, right? It's going to be a cheap aluminum kind of thing. Uh, and when it happens, it's going to be a few hundred bucks. It can even be a thousand bucks or, or even two thousand. But it'll happen once out of like 30,000 inspections. So what? You know, one nickel per inspection pretty much covers it is what I'm finding. And let's, let's balance that. The nickel per inspection versus the life of the child or pet you might have saved. So anyway, if you would like to offer these, now i got to send you to another piece of paper in front of you that I left in front of you here. It's our live tour order form. And I say it's an order form, it's really an implementation form. And on the back, the third option down, you will see this thing that says the CIE Advanced SOP Agreement Package. If you're willing to do the things, which over half of you in this room are already doing the things that are required from, from like our side, and really in reality, everyone in this room is, is doing on the in practice side. If you'd like to, us to come up with a package so that you can deliver that to clients in a way that makes sense at inspection, we'll do that for you. Just check that box. Uh, and it's all free stuff.
And I'll see you guys in Vegas, of course. Now I want to talk to you about our next structural warranty because this is the only thing that isn't in that full package that most people are familiar with. And I would say most people in the home inspection industry are familiar with our 90 day warranties and sewer guard that covers the underground sewer and water lines and uh, mold safe that covers visible mold. Most people are, are familiar with all of those, that's fine. The confusing one is this next structural warranty and the reason for the confusion, I think half of the reason is that we also called our administrative software next. So sorry about that, I, I wasn't thinking clearly at the time. Um, but we came out with this thing and the reason we did an extension of the structural warranty available for five dollars per inspection to inspectors wasn't you know because we really wanted to sell structural warranties it was to simplify our message and once again I have to give Preston Sandlin credit for uh, the inspiration at least behind this idea in front of you you have a sticker it's like a gold foil sticker we give these away free to our users and basically it's a catch-all so for whatever flyer or brochure you put out there you want to make it have a little pizzazz you just put the sticker on there and it shows twenty-five thousand dollars in warranty coverage free with your inspection which again compared to your competition that offer a uh, you know a yeah. refund of their inspection fee if you're really really pissed um, you know it's very different uh, and that's going to be actually thirteen thousand dollars worth of structural coverage uh, it is five bucks in inspection. It's really simple stuff. Yeah, it's not with the ninety-day warranty. It's not with the ninety-day warranty. There is structural coverage with the ninety-day warranty, and this is where the confusion comes in, right? So the ninety-day warranty, since our first ninety-day warranty we ever did in the home inspection industry in two thousand one, has had two thousand dollars worth of structural coverage, and it's had five hundred dollars worth of mechanical coverage. Then you add on sewer guard coverage, there's another $4,000. Then you add on mold safe, there's another $2,000. You add on the platinum roof leak protection, that five-year roof plan, that's another $3,000. By the time you add it all up, we're into the twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 range. You add the, the next structural, which essentially is kind of our answer to the international cheap buyback guarantee. Because the buyback guarantee is for something really major, right? I mean, you have to want to move out of your house and have Nick buy the house from you in order to really you know get the coverage from that policy well that's going to be a major structural issue so why not just write a, a structural policy that covers the ten or thirteen thousand dollar issue and let them stay in their house and that just makes more sense to me and it also simplified the message when we go out because some inspectors go out and they kind of stumble over the message which we're going to fix for you with the guest after our next one. But for right now, I wanna bring up Wally Conway. He's in Jacksonville, Florida. And all of these guys, like I said, have different approaches to how they do this. They all came to us at different times too. And when Wally started with us uh, over 10 years ago, there was nobody in Jacksonville offering warranties. You know, this was a very foreign concept and he, you know, made the market there and he does it with a great message and focuses a lot on making it you know, profitable, which is why we're all here. So don't do all this and then not make money. Make a lot of money. Well, I was gonna show you how to do it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hello, hello. So I, I've got to flatter you. How many inspectors, Houston's a monster market. How many inspectors are in the greater Houston area? Just two? No, no, no. Well, the entire state of Texas is about 3,000. So in the Houston area, I would guess, uh, Forgetting apprentices or home inspectors at the professional level, we're probably about 1,200. About 1,200, and we've got a whopping 12. You're the top one percenters. I flatter you for that. You know, most people are very, very short-sighted. It's, well, gosh, I could be out inspecting and, you know, knock down 500 or or $1,000 today. So I really flatter you for thinking about working on your business and hanging with other uh, like-minded people who think about <coughs> long dollars and large dollars rather than, oh gosh, I took a day off to uh, hang out with the cool people. So I'm glad you're here. Uh, Preston really blew me away quoting um, Emerson. Isn't that cool? But uh, since we're in Texas and since we're speaking about real estate, I, I thought I'd do a little Gary Keller quoting along the way, if that's all right. And Gary would say, no one succeeds alone. So I'm super grateful. Uh, I, I spent more than a decade doing things with Nathan, more than 15 years doing things with Preston and the other fellows who you'll meet. It's really neat to have people who are very, very, very successful uh, on speed dial that you can do things with. And some of you I know also are uh, members of a group we have called Top, 
do a lot of cool things, all focused on businesses. We don't spend a whole boatload of time talking about electrical panels and goofy stuff like that. We talk about dollars and, and even you know $100 bills and things like that. So I'm, I'm glad you're here. Uh, another uh, great thing from Gary is that uh, Gary Keller says the purpose of business is to fund the perfect life. Who gets to decide what the perfect life is? <laughs> you do, individually, right? I'm 63 years old. My definition of a perfect life is different than somebody who, you know, like, like Trey, who's you know 30 something or whatever. We're all at different places economically. We're at different places uh, physically in our lives. You get to decide what the perfect life is. But to Gary's point, you got to fund the damn thing. The purpose of business is to fund that life that you describe to live. And I've watched a lot of home inspectors. This is my 25th year, so a quarter century in this thing. And in most of the home inspectors, if we look across the universe, certainly those 1,100 knuckleheads who are not here with us, uh, they're, they're, it's kind of a paycheck to paycheck, and they're not really focused on building anything of any use or value over the long haul. Uh, I, I flatter you for that. But here's the real deal. How we fund things it is ultimately based on, this is funny, this is mine, and you worked it and I didn't. There we go. It is on profit. It's profit, it's profit, it's profit, it's profit. So we get a little bit mullered up looking at the top line sometimes. That could be 100,000 or 200 or 500 or 5 million, whatever it is. But ultimately, it's, the, it's really the profitability. And the profitability in the business isn't the money that you made doing inspections because that same money could have been given to somebody else, right? The profit is after the work is done, after the admin is done, after everything is done, that you've either paid yourself what that actual wage would have been or paid somebody else to do it, what's left is profit. And if there's no profit, there's no value in the business, which is the reason that well over 95% of all people who get to be my age or your age, when they're done home inspecting, they just stop answering the phone and they've got nothing. I think that's a sad thing. So I wanted to share some thoughts on how to get that answer right. Now, I've listened to, I, I'm going to guess I've been to 300 home inspection conferences over these 25 years. Every group that you know, you know of, I've probably been to at one point or another. And universally, what people piss and moan about more than anything else is the fee. And everyone blames some other dude for the low fees. But in every room that I've ever been in, one half of the room is below average in their fee position. So all you below average people, raise your damn hand, I wanna know which ones you are. <laughs> but isn't it true? It's always some other knucklehead pulling it down, but collectively it's, it's what we all do. So my whole thing is about what can we do to get that thing where it needs to be? One of the core issues in this whole thing is the first phone call you get, whether it's from the agent or it, that phone call is from the customer is, ring, 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 hi, I think we're calling home pro inspections, how may I help you? Yes, how much is a home inspection, right? How much, how much, how much, how much? I always want to know how much. So there's this great desire to give an answer. What's your answer? Depends on the house. Depends on the house. Now what? Tell me a little bit about the house. Tell me a little bit about the house. What about if we set an expectation in every conversation we have about pricing and home inspection with every realtor, every customer, every opportunity you get that we're setting a mindset about what that fee should be and that answer would sound something like this, about a mortgage payment. So the conversation is really, well, Mr. Home Buyer, you're about to buy this house. Yes, I am. And you're about to have a mortgage. Well, yes, I am. Well, how many years is that mortgage? Typically 30. How many mortgage payments is that? 360 payments. So you're going to make 360 payments over the next 30 years on this particular home. Would it be reasonable to invest about one into the finest medley of due diligence that's imaginable and a warranted position better than anything else in the industry such that we've got every probability of discovering risk and for the undiscoverable risk we've got warranty positions in place to protect you now and forevermore. Would that be reasonable for just one mortgage payment? Well, you like that? So let's imagine it's a hundred thousand dollar home. What would we reasonably expect the mortgage payment to be? Thousand uh, you got some, you got some pretty hairy interest rates down here in Texas. <laughs> uh, maybe six, seven, 
somewhere in there, right? Tax tag, title, and insurance. That the mortgage payment is going to be something like that. They're in a in a community where they've got association dues, so it's easily six or seven hundred bucks. For six or seven hundred bucks, can we put them in a reasonable warranty position and a reasonable home inspection position? Well, yes, we can. Let's move that number up to two hundred fifty thousand. Now, where's that mortgage payment? Yeah, twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred bucks, right? We're setting that expectation. It's going to be twelve, thirteen, four hundred, fourteen hundred bucks. If we're setting the expectation, it's twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundred bucks. How's nine hundred sound? It's a freaking steal. Who's boogered up the freaking pricing in our industry? Us. Us. Yeah. Exactly correct. Booger eater and inspector. Booger eater and inspector. Oh, not you. I saw you picking earlier, dude. What'd you do with it? <laughs> You're a flinger, not an eater. I threw it on him. Yeah. But you see the point of it all? If we're not creating the conversation that leads to the answer we know to be the right one, who the hell do we have to blame but ourselves? So we're going to look at how we're going to do that to get that thing rolling. Come on, bitch. You got some weird. Stick it, stick it in my pocket. So, yeah. the Pareto principle. I know you're all Pareto principle people, right? As it relates to pricing and to marketing and to shopping, it's essentially saying that somewhere between five and twenty percent of the population will pay any price asked for a product or service if you can demonstrate value <laughs> as it determined in their own dome. In every single product and service category, there are one or more items that st brands that stand out like crazy, like Rolex. Is that Rolex? Good. <coughs> Why in the world are there Rolex watches? What sense does it make to buy a, a, a ten or twenty or forty thousand dollar watch that keeps crappy time based on? Am I bugging you? No. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense, does it? Yet. They sell great. People want one. It's a status symbol. And maybe it's fishing poles or it's whatever it is. In every category, there's something like that where price is not an issue if we can demonstrate value. <laughs> Each time I get close, it works. So we're going to be in a position where we can demonstrate value. How are we going to do that? I'm going to give up on that. How are we going to do that? It's with packages, 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 packages. Since you were born, the idea that packages create great value has been embedded in your brain. And it's been embedded in every other person's brain. When you were born and your mama was all proud of you, your grandma said, what a cute little package, right? <laughs> and since that particular time, every time there's been a great event occur in your life, you've gotten another package. Here's my birthday package. Here's my Valentine's package. Here's my Christmas package. Package, 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 package. One of the reasons of the great success of Amazon is they deliver packages. Wouldn't life be cool if you delivered packages? Got lunch stuck in my teeth. Now, it's important when you're putting your package together that it looks and presents the way you want it to so that that value can truly be felt. So I don't recommend you putting Nathan stickers on your packages. I think that will hold you back. Where did this brainstorm of packages come, come from? Who invented this thing in terms of commercialization and sales? It turns out it was Estee Lauder. Estee Lauder in 1999, Time Magazine, did a, uh, uh, they named the 10 greatest business minds of the 20th century. Estee Lauder was one of them, and she was the only woman. And she did something in 1953 that relates to packaging that had never occurred in any industry before, and it was this. Up until 1953, the dutiful and beautiful women in our lives would go to the, the, the counter where the makeup was, and if they needed a red lipstick, they'd get a red lipstick, they paid their buck or whatever it cost in 1953, and they departed. Estee Lauder said, we need to have beauty packages. So she packaged all the lipsticks and the matching eyeshadow and this thing and that thing and the other thing and what was going to be a buck was now like $500. And that dutiful and beautiful spouse carried that home to her husband and said, look, honey, 
I've just saved $700 on beauty products because had I purchased them independently, it would have been $1,200. Is that not freaking brilliant? Brilliant. Will that work with men? So imagine some knucklehead needs a 3 8 inch open end wrench, like Nick. He's a, he's a motorhead. Nick calls the snap-on tool guy, dude rolls up in a truck, and Nick ends up with $5,000 worth of tools. What is the monthly payment on $5,000 worth of tools? About a mortgage payment. It just scales beautifully, doesn't it? Packages, 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 packages. People feel the value because they're getting all the things they wanted or needed and the way that they're packaged, they're truly saving money and they're being protected. It's a beautiful thing. But wait, there's more. Mercedes packages. The AMG package on a Mercedes will take a $35,000 C-Class and bump that into about an $80,000 car. In many cases, in many models and lines of Mercedes, the package price more than doubles the cost of the car to the consumer. Does it more than double the cost of the car to Mercedes? No. It's working across all product lines and service lines as well. How about these guys? McDonald's. When you roll up to McDonald's, you stick your mug out the window. Before you've had a chance to tell them what you think they want, what do they ask you? Do you want the package? Why? They're moving up the average ticket. They don't want to give you the chance to say, hey, I want the 99 cent thing. No way. They want to give you a package to assure that price point is going to be correct. So the goal is to establish a matrix of things that you can throw in your package. Clearly, the foundation of that are the RWS warranty products. Yes? Yes, because that's all the stuff that happens after the sale. Well, all the stuff before the sale, that's between your business model and your market as you best see it. Many markets, that's radon. Some markets, that's mold. I'll show you some examples and samples. When I show the examples and samples, it's so that to get your wheels turning to figure out what do you want your package to look like. Knowing, if you get it right, you're going to get close to a mortgage payment. Give people a chance to say yes to your package, man. Isn't that what we live for? <laughs> Holiday Inn. This idea of packaging, as I was sharing with you, works in every product category, in every area of service, whether it's at a lower end or a higher end. Packages work really, really well at Holiday Inn Express, if that's where you choose to play. They also work really, really, really well at Ritz-Carlton, if that's where you've decided your market, your marketing, and the performance of your company is. Packages scale and work well all across the way. This is an example from Drew White. Some of you know Drew. Uh, Ampro Inspections, um, veteran and former Navy, oh, not Navy Ranger, what do they call those guys? There? Army Ranger. This from a former Navy pilot, I can't get it right. He has a red, white, and blue, starting at $297. is not that an easy price point to start for some? They're like, yeah, that's pretty comfortable. But wait, there's more, $494, $694. What does your bottom line look like? What does your life look like? What does the life look like for the people you can afford to hire and pay really, really well at that number? The cost to deliver at $694 versus the cost to deliver at $297. Which is the more profitable package? Help me. You gotta know you got it. Yeah, it's monstrous. Does it cost more to drive to this one? Does it cost more to write the report at this one? There may be some marginal things you've stuck in there, but the hard, hard, hard cost, the big dollar cost, it didn't cost any more to schedule it. It didn't cost any more for the warranty. It didn't cost any more for the scheduling. And the profit is gargantuan. Oh, we're in Houston, aren't we? Yeah. It won't work here. Still. Won't work here. Why not? The average price is 355. Because I'm not yet convinced you've got the cojones to implement it. The singular reason it won't work in your market 
is exactly the same reason it doesn't work in the markets elsewhere around the country. You haven't got the stones to implement. Here's an interesting thing. So with that $300 price point, what's the margin on something like that? The real net, net, net. What do you figure you make? $70, $80. $70, I will bet you a big stake you don't net $80 on a $300 inspection. That, that's over 25%. You could be right, but I'd be willing to bet the stake. Typical margins as we look across the country somewhere? 20. 20 is a home run. When you really get digging at people's p and it's usually 10. Okay? Now, we'll use your numbers to make my math easy. Okay, there. We're going to say 25% margin. Way down there at 300 bucks. What's 25% of 300 bucks? 75. Good job. Got a bunch of math majors here. $75. Can we use the same 25% up here? Absolutely. It's probably larger, but let's lose it here. What's 25% of 700? 185. 185. If this is 185 and this is 75, and I, I'm, I'm pushing at this, the quick math says you could lose two-thirds of your business and net more money. You with me? Why does that take such kahunas to try this program? If you run off two-thirds of your business at that price point, you will net more money and have done one-third the work. Got your calculator? You with me? Let's take a look at another, just by way of example. This is actually Rob's, you'll meet Rob in just a minute, in Atlanta. Set it up just a little bit different, but nonetheless, same idea. What Rob chose to do is a singular increase in fee at each step point. Bump it up 125, bump it up 350. Take your average fee and bump it up 350 and tell me how your life looks. I will share this with you. The people who implement these programs and this mindset can hire the people that don't do it and both will make more money. Isn't that crazy? I like that. And a third example, just done a slightly different way. Push it up 125, push it up 350. Give the people the chance to give you more money. Rob's gonna show you some cool ways to introduce this via email in a bit. But it, it give them the opportunity to say yes to giving you more money. Show me the money. What movie? Jerry Maguire. It's been too long. <laughs> been too long. <laughs> don't start on when I, I used to watch it in black and white or any of that crap. I don't need that from you right now. <laughs> it's all fun. So you're saying our current price structure right now could be that basic package. Sure. And we can just offer improvements in both of you on that. I think that's reasonable. So if they want the better, they get it. If not, they, they can get the basic package. Sure. Yeah. Sure. That's an individual decision as you look where you're currently positioned, what you're going to put in your package. But the idea is if you add 150 or 350 to each, give them that opportunity to say yes, that's margin. Thick, heavy margin. Am I getting fired? No, no, you're fine. Okay. All right. So, this is to show me the money. I only met you, which he was talking to Nathan, this is a, a, an email I got, or, no, Facebook. I uh, only met you and Nathan in February. You've changed the way I view my business, really making me look at it from the client's perspective, client's perspective, client's perspective. How many of us say, well, my market, I looked around, and this is what all the other dudes are doing. Who cares what all the other dudes are doing? Care what the market will accept. And mind you, everyone else will think you're nuts while you're doing these things, making more money than they make, and I like that. All right. From the client's perspective, to provide value, 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 in, the, in whose mind? Client. Client's Client. mind. At value added products and services as a bundle to increase revenue from each client. Adding a USB with your warranty programs and then bundling services has raised my average fee over $200. Mm -hmm. 
raised my average fee over $200. Take the number of inspections you did in 2018, multiply by the number 200. Anybody got a, a number less than $10,000? 300. How many? 300. 300,000. 300,000. 300,000 in one year. How's that feeling? Call the wife. He's upstairs. I'll never come in. Would you get my point? Where'd yes. you come in from? Fort Worth. Okay, that's right. You mentioned that earlier. Now I think I probably know your company. Uh, so, yeah, yeah what, what's okay. your company? Seven five. Seven five. Yep. <laughs> All right, so, um, <laughs> so one thing I want you guys to know about these packages is that there are two people in this room that do a million dollars plus in revenue that have been clients of ours for a long time that I do not believe have launched these packages. And it's just as easy for them at the million dollar level as you, whatever level you might be at, whether you're nearing a million or nearing a half a million or never want to do more than a quarter million, just as easy for all of you to implement these packages. And the way that we did them, and I'm going to scroll back a little bit here and go to this one. This is a, a great example. Uh, so this is a company out of Ohio called Erie Inspection, leader in their local market. That baseline inspection, you don't have to say goodbye to those low-end clients or clients that don't want to go to the high end of stuff. You can still sell the C-Class at the Mercedes dealership and also sell the AMG. And the way you sell more C-Class is you say, why the hell would you use anybody that wasn't offering warranty coverage? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me, but we're starting that at a value price. And that makes a difference, especially if you're doing volume and you intend to go to 1,500 or 8,000 or 12,000 inspections per year like some of these guys. Can I have a piece of that? Sure. Thank you. The next, <laughs> the next thing, the next step up, and we designed these packages and we tested them with 100 companies. There wasn't a single company that didn't sell more than $10,000 worth of upgrades in a single year. Not one. I have one guy in this room that did over $300,000 in upgrades in one year. Now, the key is, and we've tested this in a lot of different directions, the key is, here's how well we're going to take care of you across the whole structure. But if you upgrade in the middle section, a $125 price point was right on point to get the highest number of takers and the maximum level of profit. And the only thing you're really adding in that middle section is a visual mold evaluation maybe, uh, a little IR. And I, when I say IR, R, I don't mean like a full infrared scan of every little part of the house. I mean, we, we gave them a very specific thing. We said we're going to identify issues with electrical panels, and maybe other under windows and, and in the mechanical stack in the middle of the house. We're not going to do a full out IR scan. Uh, and then the next level up, the key feature of the $350 upgrade beyond that is an indoor air quality test. Now in Texas, we have a little bit of a challenge there. You do have to go and get a license, but it is not that hard. I have a guy in this room that, that has not launched these packages and went through and got that license. So he's, you know, it's, it's very doable folks and you should all have it. And in other states where, you know, there's only four states where we even have any regulation around this. The inspectors yeah, do very well. Yeah. So yeah, you have launched them? Yeah. Okay. I had thought that you didn't. My apologies, That's right. but somebody else didn't. And they agreed with my, my assessment. So I got a 50% right. Uh, but the key feature there is, is an environmental assessment. So if you don't have that, it's okay. You can still have this one for now and then build that one when it makes financial sense. Um, and I would keep it in those in that 125 and 350 range. Um, while you've been doing business with us a long time, you do all of our stuff. Uh, I'm going to ask you for a weird question. We do something different because we get bored. This is our uh, three, four, this is our fifth time doing this presentation. Every time it changes up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to throw you a curveball. What is the, the biggest downside that you've had in a decade as a you know, million dollar company plus offering these inspection warranties? Biggest downside? The, the closest thing to a downside was convincing the rest of the staff we were playing with pricing and asking them to, to buy in. So the, 
from the consumer perspective or agent perspective, really none. Right. And and by the way, zero to twenty dollars is what our packages run on those inspection uh, warranties. So you know the, the full package, the thing that that is right here, that twelve thousand plus dollars worth of coverage is twenty bucks. The add the structural to twenty five. Since we're doing it in a weird way, we've never done this before. Right. I want a revenue share in this. I will pay one hundred percent of your fees if you do this. And we'll do a 50-50 revenue share on your increase. Would that be okay? Ooh, total risk Anybody, reversal. Yes, I, I take, want in on this action. I'm I, gonna, I will <laughs> take 100% of the risk. I will also pay for all the marketing materials. All we want is a 50-50 revenue share only on the incremental increase. Would that be okay with you? Why I find that fascinating, you all want, no way, motherfucker, I'm trying to steal my money. <laughs> but at the same time, you're not yet committed to doing it. I find that extraordinary. Right. It's, it's too risky to, to, to have me fund it and we'll revenue share it. Right. Well, we don't know that they're not uh, committed to it. Let me make it really easy, though, from an implementation side. I showed you that Home Inspection Carolina <laughs> brochure. This is the thing you want all over town. I mean, under the windshield wipers in the parking lots of real estate offices wouldn't be a bad uh, idea. Thank you, Wally. Well, you um, revenue share with uh, that. No, they won't. They won't give you their their money. It's amazing. Sorry, Wally. I got so upset. I said a dirty word to everybody. Thanks for coming. <laughs> but here's what I want you to know about this package thing, because we templated this, and basically we make little minor modifications to it for anybody that asks, but mostly it's templated, because it just works. It creates a lot of revenue for home inspection companies. It builds profit. So if you want this, we'll build this. All you have to do is take that card where you wrote brochures at the bottom, because you wanted the free brochures, and write packages. Now, we're not going to print and send you a bunch of these, because guess what you don't do with these? You do not pass these out at the real estate offices. That gives you a higher price point. And this is just reality and it's, yeah, it's marketing and it's salesmanship. And I'm sure, you know, somebody can find some reason to find fault in what I'm about to say on like an internachi forum, but people are price sensitive. And if you're a real estate agent and you're representing a buyer, you want to make sure that they get a great product, of course, but you also want to make sure that they're getting a good price. This you know, this myth of you get what you pay for. No, sometimes people have prices that are out of line. You know, if there's a guy in, in Houston that charges a thousand bucks on average per inspection, uh, like Wally might do some weeks, that doesn't offer any of this stuff like a majority of you in the room do, uh, he's clearly overpriced. But he's getting it sometimes, right? So you want to keep that, that entry level price good so that you can keep volume coming in and then let the people that want to pay more and get more, get more. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I will spend absolutely zero time on that Breeze Radon Monitor. And the reason I'm going to spend zero time and I'm going to get to your questions because this happens to be the most advanced radon monitoring equipment in the world's history. And I know that the radon level in here is 0.2 picocuries per liter because it tells me on my cell phone actively what's going on. Uh, so you just don't have radon here. Good for you. <laughs> Zero breeze sales in Texas. Um, but if you were somewhere else and or you move, they start under $850 fully managed, really cool. You're going to uh, experience all sorts of efficiencies and whatnot. Uh, and it'll even show you where it's at. Uh, it'll actually give us the speed of the airplane we were in coming here when we accidentally turned it on in the baggage compartment. Uh, and it'll customize that report. All right, let's skip on to uh, something else then. Ah, here we go. All right, so. I just got a question. Yes, I'm sorry, I totally forgot. My bad. I understand, my wife does it all the time. Anyway, um, you said don't give out the brochures to the realtors at the offices. No, no, give out the brochures. You want this brochure and these punch you in the face flyers. Yeah. And in fact, you want flyers like this one that uh, talks about sewer guard. Yeah. You want to get that point across all the time. You want to, uh, if you offer sewer cameras, you want to put out something that, that says we offer sewer cameras. But you don't want to put out the packages out at, because pe here's the problem. <laughs> There's 1.6 million real estate agents in this country, and I love you all. But when they see a price that says plus 350, plus 150, they start adding it up and they go, that guy's expensive. Okay, but what are we going to do with the brochures that don't get in the real? No, 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 it's a menu. Like when you go to McDonald's. So you hand it to the client. And it comes in the form of emails maybe if you 
find a way to do that. I don't know, you might find one soon. Uh, but you don't hand it out as a brochure. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. All right, and here's another one, uh, the five-year roof leak. You know, you wanna hit somebody on an emotional level, you gotta keep hitting them on that emotional level. Sewer line backs up, there's poo in the house. That's horrible. At least recover, right? Uh, the five-year roof leak protection plan. I mean, th this is one that pisses off the competition real good. They start talking about you. Uh, recall check, it's, you know, it's an oldie but a goodie, as they say. And, uh, and of course, uh, Wally came up with this one for us. The sewer scope, it's like a colonoscopy for your sewer line. <laughs> you know, make sure people know what they're getting in there. Uh, and, and by the way, if you do infrared, how many of you have infrared cameras? Do a little infrared. Okay, so like everybody. Okay, that's the market now. And, and I'll tell you, thank you for doing that. That pushes the industry forward. When I was three years old in 1984, Phil Thornberry decided to be a home inspector. And I found my way into crawl spaces as a six-year-old. Okay. Yeah. You know, and he had to go find me. Um, my most damaging thing I ever did to a client at, in single digits years was I uh, pulled my uh, dad's Ranger XLT truck out of gear while in the truck alone on the top of a hill and took out a seller's fence <laughs> with the seller watching. <laughs> so, you know, I had a lot of fun with that, but, but I, I think of how different my life would be if, you know, my, my dad had fallen off a roof or, you know, whatever. So, you know, be careful out there. Um, but also how different my life would be if certain things didn't change. Because when he started doing inspections in 1984, anybody uh, was in it then? Anybody in, in 1984? Okay, so right, my, dad, my dad still inspects to this day. He loves doing it. He's got a multi-million dollar firm himself, but he just loves crawl spaces. I don't know. Uh, and, he, you know, when he started in 1984, the inspections were 45 minutes, they were $95, and they were crap. And that was the standard back then. And even though this, the written standards themselves, because ASHI existed, we were ASHI members, ASHI kids went to the meetings when the whole families would come. Even though the standards honestly didn't change that much from then to here, the real standard of what we do has. So keep moving that up. I wanted to write into these advanced inspection standards that you pull out an infrared camera at the electrical panel. I really wanted to. The market just wasn't ready, and I needed in order to effectively do what I want to do here with, with the advanced inspection standards and, and raise that value mark and raise what you guys get paid everywhere you go, I needed thousands of people to join in. You know, otherwise, it's meaningless. Uh, and by the way, there are two outcomes to this. Well, three. One is that it's weird and, and, it, and exceptional, and since you're do, at a higher standard, you get rewarded for that in the marketplace, and that's great. Number two is that this becomes a standard and then we keep moving it up and we kind of manage that. The number three outcome, which I would not be disappointed in, is that our associations and licensing authorities and everybody else start saying, you know what, well, we could add that. And so if they change the base SOPs, I'm happy, I don't need to own them. Uh, I just need, they just needed to kick in the, in the butt and, and I figured, uh, you know, I'd be the one to do it. Uh, so let me go to a couple more things here. By the way, we have cool, promotional stuff like this, this measurement checklist, it all gets customized with your logo. That's another thing to pass out to real estate agents, be a resource. Uh, and I love this one. And, and these are um, brochures you can buy from our marketing department. It's all done for you stuff. So, you know, Preston doesn't have to think that much to make promotions happen. He just has to tell somebody and it's done. This is a uh, walkthrough checklist. And I wish every buyer's agent would do a walkthrough and would have this checklist with them when they did it. It would solve all a lot of problems for us. Um, so let me go to one last thing and then I'm gonna to go to uh, uh, Rob Lemoyne, who you've probably not heard of before this, except for the uh, promotion here. So he's a pretty quiet dude, uh, but he's like the silent killer, silent assassin in home inspection. Uh, he went from like $700,000 a year when I met him to like three plus million in uh, one year. He'll give you his number in just growth and it's just going to blow your mind. It should make you angry, honestly, but the last guy will make you way angrier. And I look at guys like Rob and I look at, you know, Semperfy and, uh, and, and Sterling uh, and, uh, you know, the whole back row there of million dollar plus companies. And I think... You know, there are 30,000 home inspection companies handling 7 million real estate transactions between the U.S. and Canada. 
Do you know how many nationwide home warranty companies there are handling the same 30,000 transactions? Or excuse me, the same 7 million transactions? It's not 30,000 warranty companies. There's like 10 of us. So we're, that's the division there. The division's bad. And I'm not saying that there needs to be only 10 home inspection companies across the country. I don't think that that's realistic. And I don't think I'd like that world. But I think that you know, if everybody did you know, half as many transactions as you did in here, there'd only be 5,000. And we'd have career paths. We'd have um, a, a totally different mindset in the industry than come in and, you know, and, and grab a, a, a hammer and a voltmeter and, and off you go. Take a few classes on and you're, you're, you're ready to be a home inspector. I'd like to see that world. And the way that we get there is by creating enterprises with enterprise value. And I don't care at this point whether your enterprise is like you and another dude or just you doing a premium job or if you want to go multi-inspector firm, just leave the industry a little better than you found it. <coughs> One guy that's doing a great job of that with his communications in particular is Rob Lemoyne. He's out of Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, we're going to have him come, give him a round of applause, right? Rob. Hey, guys. Oh. Um, um, let me let me circle back to packages real quick. Who's not doing packages in here? So a bunch of you. Okay, so um, packages, you want to make sure, I don't know if you mentioned it, you make sure that you put low cost and low time items in your package, all right? So you want that package to be as, as highly profitable as you can. So what we, I'll, I'll tell you kind of the way we attack a package. So we push, we try to get people to go into package two and, and it's $125. And I'm going to make about $95 in pure profit on that package because what I have in that package doesn't really cost me anything. And it doesn't add time to the inspection. All right? So make sure you don't fill that package with stuff that, that costs you a lot of money. Like, uh, I know you guys don't, you don't do radon testing here, right? Don't put stuff like that in there. Don't put a termite inspection in there. Uh, so make sure you do that. And then when, um, the way we, we don't sell a package over the phone when they call and book an inspection, that's, that's going to overwhelm the buyer. You're going to, you're going, to, you're going to give them too many options to choose from, okay? So just be careful how you how you attack that. So we we attack it after the booking. We get the inspection on the books, then we try to upgrade it, okay? So we do that through email, which I'll tell you about. We've also started a program to where um, our scheduling staff, the day before the inspection, they'll call and say, hey, I just want to make sure that everything is, is ready for your inspection. And oh, by the way, most of our most of our home buyers upgrade into in, into this package here because you get this this and this so they call a day before and try to get them to upgrade into that package so uh so that's kind of the way we attack it just so be careful what you put into these things because this is meant to increase your profitability like what wally talked about uh so don't eat up the profitability with stuff that will uh that cost you too much money everybody good on that yeah. you know what your average is on those phone calls prior to the inspection what do you mean average like uh, closing your average is uh, uh, upsell I don't have that number yet because we just started that that program. Okay. Yeah, it's it's starting to work. I see them show up, and what I did there is I designed a package that's only available on that phone call. You don't find it on my website. You don't find it anywhere, so I can track that particular package. And it's called something different, so I want to know how, you know uh, over time how well that's selling. Um, um, so maybe next time I see you, I'll give you a number on that. <laughs> see you. So, um, okay. So uh, a lot of people you know come and ask me. You know, what do you do to grow? How do you how do you develop the business? What do you do with marketing people? Things like that. Um, uh, you know, and so what, what I tell them is, we give a simple message, and we give it over and over and over again. We give a, a, a very simple message. We deliver it over and over and over again through all of our channels, email, through our marketing people, through our uh, website. We we do the same message over and over, and we just drill it into people's heads. And I'll probably drill it into your head before we're done in the next thirty minutes. Okay. So um, who? So how many people do presentations for real estate agents? Pretty much everybody. So you do the thing where you, you know, you, you buy the lunch, you buy the breakfast, all that kind of stuff. You stand up in the front for five minutes and, and talk to them. Okay. All right. So all right. So let's do this. So I'm going to be the home inspector, and you guys are the uh, real estate agents. Okay. You got, y'all can be a real estate agent for a little while. Maybe. I'm gonna make my pitch for it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so I'm, I'm sponsoring the breakfast, and they call me to the front, and I, I run up to the front, and I'm all excited, and I say, "Hey guys, I'm Rob Lemoyne with Residential Inspector. Um, before we get started today, I'm gonna do something for you guys. So, so I do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. So, can anybody tell me what this is? 
DUI test. That's good. Yeah. Good. It could be that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any other guesses? Uh, Advertise for Nike. I don't know. Dude, step first, ten yep. feet. It's ten feet, yeah. It's ten feet. So yeah, I had one real estate agent say it's termites. So I don't, I don't know how, how in the world they got termites out of this. So okay, so this is one stride link for Usain Bolt. Everybody know who Usain Bolt is? Mm -hmm. I'm outside the camera right now. It's okay. We'll look. All right, so this is one stride link for Usain Bolt. You know, you don't know who he is? No, he's a world world class runner from Jamaica, right? You know where he's from? Okay, he breaks all the world records. Okay, so when he runs, one foot lands here, and the other foot comes down almost 10 feet later and when he's running at full speed, isn't that? That's, that's cool, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So, right. so um, you're saying when he, when he does a typical 100 meter race, he takes 41 steps. His nearest competitor takes 44 steps to complete the exact same race. Okay. So you can say that Usain does something a little differently than his competition. He does something a little better than his competition. And you and I, you know, real estate agents, are always looking to do something different in our, comp in our competition. So briefly, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what my company does differently than the competition and how it'll help you in your business. Okay. So right at that moment, you know, I've got their attention, right. right? Everybody loves this thing and I got their attention. And at that moment, I have a chance to deliver my message. All right. So wh what do you say at that moment? When you have their attention, they put down their cell phones, they stopped eating the casserole or whatever you fed them. All right. What do you say at that moment? Right? So somebody tell me, what do you say? Who does who does warranties in here? All right, so okay, who, who, people who do warranties, tell me what you say. Huh? Well, we're now we're back to reality now. You're not the realtor anymore. I stopped the presentation. Tell me what they tell me. Someone, somebody, give me a message. See, I mean, if we it, do things differently than most everybody else out there. How? We do offer warranties. What does that mean? That means that if there's anything that's missed in our inspection, we've got you covered. It's not going to come back on you. We've got it. We take care of it. We don't just show up, do an inspection, and leave. We do a lot more than that. Okay, that's decent. I wouldn't say if you, anything new. missed. <laughs> huh? Oh, you're brand new. Okay, that's good for being brand new then. Okay, so you're you're close on the way you on the way you're you're forming that. It's getting close. Okay, um, so I'm gonna come. Does this clicker work? I wouldn't rely on it. No. <laughs> All right. Okay. So what is your message? So, you know, I, I asked you guys what your message is and it's, it's most of, probably most of you couldn't tell me and, and, you know, just stand up and tell me quickly. Okay. So in like 30 seconds, you should be able to tell me exactly what your message is and you should say that message over and over and over and over again and reinforce why a client and agent should, should be using you. So everything you do should be directed that message. Every flyer should have your message on it over and over and over. So here's the message. Here's a message that we deliver. Um, you know, our home inspection plus our free warranties along with our 18 month warranty offers your client the absolute best protection on the market today. So I pay for these warranties so I can uh, help your clients for free. So um, feel free to take a picture of that. You guys. We're not, so, we're not hiding it. Yeah, you guys can stop me. If, I think we have, we're okay. Like, we're we good time. So if you guys want to ask questions or whatever. You know, I kind of, you know, I'd rather just be a conversation than me just telling you stuff. Um, so, so let's go back to the Hussein Bolt thing, okay? So I, I do the little thing where I jump across and, and tell everybody uh, who, about Hussein Bolt. You got it? I'll email it to anybody who wants. <laughs> Take a long time to take a picture, dude. <laughs> so, okay, so, so uh, I do the Hussein Bolt thing and I say, you know, now you guys are the real estate agents again, okay? So I say, you and I as business people are always looking to do something different than our competition. So briefly, I'm going to tell you guys about something that my company does different than everybody else and how it, how it helps you guys in your business. So we offer free warranty protection with all of our home inspections. Okay. So when, when the client uses us, they get a free five year roof leak warranty. And yeah, I said five years, they get a six month structural warranty for free. They get a 90 day sewer, uh, underground sewer and water line warranty. They get a 90 day mechanical warranty. They get a 90 day mold growth warranty. You see, I pay for these warranties so that I can give them to your client for free. 
I want to help your client when they move into the house. I don't want them to move in and have a uh, AC go out on them or the dishwasher leak and then they call you, Miss Agent, and you don't have a solution for them. I want you to have a solution for them when they call you. And that solution is, hey, call Rob at RAA. He might have a warranty that'll help us. Okay, so I want that call and I want to make that client happy and I want to keep them happy as long as we can in their house. They're happy with the real estate transaction. They're happy with uh, you as the agent and that leads to referrals, right? Right. So, all right, so, so that's what I say in that moment. So, yeah, so that just, that just, that whole message there just comes out very quickly. And I say it over and over and over and over and over again, right? right. Dang it. All right, so keep it simple. You know, it, it needs to be the same message. Don't, don't be up here and tell them all the million things you do. And you know, and if we have time, I have another presentation I can do, like a, a realtor one, a five minute one. If there's time, oh, right. we'll do it at the end. Uh, it's about Mr. Bean is in it. <laughs> Jeez. Just use the arrow. It's okay. Close to it. All right. So you so you build powerful stories around your um, your your message. So sewer guard is an easy one to build a story around. Um, so you know, I get in front of the room and I say. You know, I just had a uh, client we did an inspection for last last month. She was a you know single mom. She moved into the house, and like two weeks later, the sewer backed up. You know, so she's frantic, of course, because she's got poop coming up in the in the shower stall. You know, and so she calls the real estate agent, and the real estate agent really doesn't know what to tell her. So they end up calling me, and I say, you know what? Let's 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 you know, Miss Homeowner, get get a plumber to come out, and let's uh, get a diagnosis and an estimate, and we'll look at it under our warranty. So she does that, and the warranty, the estimate ends up being two thousand dollars to fix it. So she's absolutely freaked out. She's got a new house, and she's single mom, and she's got a two thousand dollar bill in her hand. So we put it through our warranty uh, process, and we end up getting seventeen hundred bucks sent to her in a check, seventeen hundred dollars. You know, so we were able to help that client in, in a very emotional time, which looks really good on the real estate agent and looks good on us as the home inspection company. So, so that, that's the kind of story that I tell and that will, you know, it's a powerful story really. And so it, and it, it um, shows the client and, and any agent that has had a sewer backup issue with one of their clients, yeah, I don't think they'll ever use a non-sewer guard <coughs> home inspector again. But that's a big thing and you know, and I can, I can tell you that Sewer guard, I don't know, he, Nathan probably pays out 10 or 12 of them a year for me, and they're all big checks. So, because it does well, happen. One in every seven homes will have a failure within 90 days of your inspection. We'll write a check on it. We'll uh, dig up three yards today. Yep. Wow. Okay, so let's, let's move away from the message thing real quick, and let's talk about who you're marketing to, okay? So, you know, I think a really good indicator of a growing home inspection company, not just a growing home inspection company, a consistently growing home inspection company, is the number of new agents that you bring in every week, okay? Who knows that answer? How many new agents do you bring in per week? Does anybody know that? Nobody in here knows it? I said we do the report. Right. Okay. So when you get a new agent, do you know that's a new agent to your company? Do you have a way to know that? Okay. Do you call them after you're done, with, like, or have, or somebody in your business calls them and sees how, see how the inspection went? Okay, so new agent, um, you should be tracking that every every week. I pull that number every single Monday because that's a lead measure to tell me am I going to hit my growth numbers or not. All right, so I, I know exactly how many new agents I need to hit a growth number. So I'll, I'll we'll drill down on some on some numbers here. Okay. All right. So we've completed 7,800 inspections in the last 12 months. Um, 1,150 brand new agents came through the doors for me and during that time period. That's 23 a week, okay? So 23 a week is, is kind of a number I've, I've been stuck on for a long time and I know that's gonna lead to a certain amount of growth, which is over a million dollars in growth <laughs> is what it'll lead to. Um, so, so that number right there, you should know it if you don't know it and you should track it every single week. And, and keep it top of mind all the time because that's that's going to help you grow. Okay, so new agent, how many times per year do you think a brand new agent will use you? Give me some guesses. Well, at least once. Two. Yeah, at least once. That's mm -hmm. Two times? Anybody else? How many times, Nathan? <laughs> Four or five. Three times? Three times. Okay. All right, so hold that thought, we'll come back to that. All right, so in, 
there's some more stats on our company. So in the past 12 months, 2,210 different agents used us. That's recurring agents, that's brand new agents, that's top producing agents, that's all of them. That's how many different agents uh, accounted for the 7,800 inspections. All right, 1,829 of these agents used us four times or less. So that's 83% of our agent base currently uses us four times or less. So again, these are powerful numbers to know. You can pull this information from your, from your software system and, and figure out what percent of the agents use you how many times, all right? So 1,490 of these agents used us two or less times. That's 67% use us two or less times, all right? So, so let's talk about what that tells you, okay? So the average <coughs> agent, I think, uses you two and a half times a year, okay? Do what? No, but when I when I when you average it out, so say I brought in my 23 agents in the week, I'm thinking I'm going to get about two and a half inspections per agent per year. It's kind of what I'm thinking I'm going to get out of those agents. Some will give me 10, some will give me one. Most are going to give me four or less. All right. So you go back once. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. So. Let's look at what that means, two and a half times per year. So I had 1,150 new agents come in, right, during the year, and they used me two and a half times, and that's 2,875 inspections that came in. So if you look at 2,875 inspections times an average fee of $485, it's one point, almost $4 million in, in, in new business that came through the door, All right? So this is why this number is really important to track. And if you're not tracking, start doing it. All right, so let's look at it on a little bit smaller scale. So let's say you got it, you brought in eight new agents. That's 416 inspections, and they use you two and a half times a year. That's 1,040, which would give you half a million dollars right there. So, you know, um, you guys think you could bring in eight new agents a week? Yeah, I know Sean can. I bet you Sean knows his number every week. What's your number? How many new agents per week? Last week was 40. 43. So Sean is a rapidly growing home inspection company that consistently grows, and he knows the number off the top of his head. So what does that tell you? Yeah. I'm not going to answer your question, but I just share something. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So when we just decided to focus on it, it made a big difference. We said, in the next 100 days, we want to meet 100 new agents. It was just simple, like, teach my team that. And we met 152 new agents in that time. So it was just the motivation and the... Yeah in front of you let's meet more people so you can set that goal and yep. yeah just well, pay attention to it. well what you focus on and what you measure gets results right so if you focus on this you'll get results from it so but but you gotta you gotta know kind of what these numbers all mean for you um, so here's kind of like what they mean for me so if, if there's a very good chance that when I bring in a new agent you know, it's going to be four or less times per year they use me, or it's going to be two and a half times on average they're going to use me. Okay, so um, that tells me that I got to be very, very consistent about our marketing. I can't um, do a home inspection on Monday and then go market on Tuesday, and then do a home inspection on Wednesday and go market on Thursday because that's not consistent. So if you want to bring in a a, a, a a consistent amount of realtors every single week, marketing has got to be consistent. So. However, you got to do to get that done, whether it's through automatic means or emails or you know drip campaigns or doing more presentations or hiring a marketing rep. You know that's that's what needs to get done. So this also tells you to pay attention to your cost per capture of agents. So you might want to think through before you spend the two thousand dollars to sponsor a luncheon for agents. Most of that room doesn't do any business, right? So there's eighty percent of the agents in there don't do anything. Um, so you gotta you gotta kind of pay attention to that. I'm not saying don't do it in, in some instances, but I'm saying to pay attention to it. Um, also, you should identify your top 20% in your company. So find out who, what agents are in your, in your personal top 20% and focus on retention there. So if you can um, break apart those 20% and you focus on the retention of those people, and then you say, okay, I'm gonna bring in eight new agents a week over here, and, you're, and so you, you've got these people coming back and you're turning the numbers over here, you're gonna grow. I mean, and, and you can you can bust down the numbers, and you can almost predict the growth. All right. So um, then you put in some strategies to bring in top producing agents. So these would be top twenty percent agents overall. Um, 
And the reason you'd want to do this is because these are stop producing agents are business people. All right, so they're not the soccer mom agents and the ones that do two and a half times the inspections a year. They're business people and business people grow their businesses. So if you pick up an agent that does 20, um, 20 inspections a year with you, the next year they're gonna grow their business. You know, So they're gonna do 30 the next year. So it adds some predictability to what's going on in your, in your business. Anybody have any questions about that before I leave? I just wanna say for those of you that, that find this part to be very analytical, it is. I watched this for the first time, and then we all, all of us that go on this tour, sat down and had a little chat. Like, holy crap! An agent's worth two and a half inspections a year. I mean, you know, on average, you have to go by the average. It doesn't matter if you need the thirty a year agents and the ten a year agents. That's that's your average. So you start watching those metrics, and uh, I watch it daily. We got thirteen new agents today. You know, that, that was our number, and I never watched it in 20 years of running my home warranty business, which really has the same sales cycle as home inspection, I never once asked that question of any of my staff. But once I asked, we uh, you know, we changed our, our whole philosophy and how we were doing our sales and marketing. And uh, our Houston uh, and really Southern Texas team leader is in the room, Natalie Hedgefoot, she's sitting here, and this is her first time seeing this presentation. I see her taking a lot of notes right at this point. Point that should tell you she has a whole team of people that sell warranties for uh, for us to real estate agents you know, down here. And, and uh, do we have somebody in Dallas too, right? Now? Yeah, and we have a Dallas rep. She was in our. She was in the room with us. Oh, she was there. Oh, cool. All right, I guess she was in a room I was in. I didn't meet her. But anyway, go on, go on. Guess, this is so important, though. I got I got a lot out of it. This, this is really. I mean, it's so it's so simple and it's 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 silly to, that we don't even track it and it's such a great lead measure you know because you can you can measure your marketing by you know if you if i'm looking for 23 a week on average and i start to see it sliding i know that there's something going wrong in my marketing you know i need to fix something that's that's caused me to go down the 19 a week or whatever it is um so you know i'm always kind of just paying attention to that number um and then when those new agents come in, I'm, I look up, I look at every one of them, not me, but you know, staff in my business look at every one of them to determine where do they come from. You know, did one of my marketing people bring them in? Did RIA generate them ourselves? You know, did the client bring them on? So I'm wanting to know where they all came from too. So that's another powerful thing you can do. Um, all right, so um, Back to the message. So um, if you want to capture more agents and retain more top agents, do more inspections and definitely sell more add-on services, you know, you got you got to be very thorough with your communication and, and deliver that simple message over and over and over again, right? So make sure you tell everybody your message. And when I say everybody, I mean listing agent, buyer agent, and, and buyer every single time, right? So um, that's not changing. There you go. All right, so I'm gonna tell you, all right, right here. So the um, uh, easy place to start communicating the message is your after, after you book an inspection, it's the, the email communication you have, and it's something you can fix like today or tomorrow, and it can be fixed and you can be more thorough with that, and you'll get more inspections, you'll get more add-on services if you just fix that. So I'm gonna go through uh, a little bit how, uh, some stuff that we do on, um, on our end for this. So um, after, we're gonna talk a lot about what we do right after we book an inspection, okay? So this is all, all the stuff that comes out of, uh, you know, we use ISN, so it comes out of ISN after we do the book an inspection, all right? So generally in our email communication, we're gonna sell our company on pretty much every single email, and we're gonna talk about our free warranties, we're gonna talk about our 18 month home warranty on every email that goes to all three parties, okay? Um, we remind them of their decision to use RIA. You know, we, we tell them, hey, it's, you know, thanks for using us. Don't forget you have all these free warranties that come with your inspection. Am I staying in your way? You sure? Okay. All right. So um, we also use email to sell add-on services. So there's a lot of months we sell $50,000 in just add-ons. There's a lot of months we sell 100 home warranties. All right. So if you want to add um, a good piece of money to your monthly, you know, your monthly take, Selling the, the home warranty, the 18 month home warranty is an easy way to do it. Um, and we don't do it any other way besides through email. So it's pretty much automatic. So the orders just come in. You know, like while I'm standing here, I'll get two orders for them. All right, so these are the, these are the main email templates that we use. Um, a lot of people, you got, a lot of you guys have these uh, email templates. 
uh, already loaded in your software system or whatever. So we we kind of um, customized them all and made them to where they sell our, our, our message really. And it sells it over and over. So I'll, I'll go through a few of these with you. Okay, so um, generally every, every email that goes out is going to the buyer agent, listing agent, and the client, it tells them about our 18 month warranty, tells them about our free warranties, okay? People don't know, you know, they, even, even when I do presentations or we do presentations, they don't remember. You know, they just, you have to tell them about it over and over and over, or they just, they, they forget about it, all right? And it helps keep the client from canceling, so uh, we're constantly reminding them what we're gonna do for them and the benefits of our warranties and things like that, so they don't cancel. I right. said we were changing things up in this room. I need to change it up just a little bit. And I was on a roll too. I know. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Um, so how many of you have no idea what the deuce he's talking about when he says 18 month warranty, honestly, by showing Oh, I didn't. Okay. Warranty. I didn't know okay. that. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. Well, I mean, it might make the rest of it make a little sense. Yeah, okay. Cool. Let me back up because we, we've woven this very complex web and I don't want to confuse anybody. But if you're using our full package, so the one that includes the sewer guard and the five-year roof leak protection, if you're doing that, our one-year warranty business, which is you know available to real estate agents, they buy it at closing, it's the stuff that Natalie goes around Houston every <coughs> single day, hitting a minimum of how many offices a day, Natalie? 20, well, 15 to 20. 15 is the requirement, 20 is what she really does. Hitting those 20 offices with one-year warranties, uh, you know, calling, emailing agents like our reps do, essentially, we give inspectors the ability to do the exact same thing virtually by email and a, a little brochure. And if you're offering these this full package, then instead of getting 12 months, like Natalie's selling all day, a one-year warranty, they get an 18-month warranty because of the inspection with you and all the coverage that was there. So not only do we extend it, which is another benefit to using your home inspection over another home inspection company, but then we pay you too. And um, just... Keep in mind, also as you're seeing this, that every month I set I send Rob a check for those commissions, and it equates to about the mortgage on a million dollar house. So, if you'd like a free million dollar house, build a 7,800 home inspection company uh, uh, a year, and just have one email that well, 10 or 20 emails that say, "Hey, click this link for your 18 month warranty." Natalie, did you have something? So, just so you all know this, like the 18 18th- month. The 18 month warranty is just phenomenal. There's nothing like it in the whole USA. There's a 14 month warranty, which is HWA, which I'm sure you've heard of that in Warranty of America. There is no 18 month. That right there is your ticket to success. I rather sell the 18, I've told Nathan this, I want to sell the 18 month all day long because I would get so much more business. Um, that's the winner right there, y'all. And by the way, if you were to ask uh, somebody who the best home inspector in town was and they got to experience home inspections and then read reports and tell you which one was the best, who would be the best person to do that? A wi- the Wizard of Oz. I mean, come on. A home inspector, guys. Or me. I'd be yeah. the best one. Okay, you'd be the best one. A home inspector. Uh, you know, Natalie worked for a couple of different warranty companies before coming to us like many of our uh, members of our team down here in Texas. So anyway, does that clear it up? Anybody have any questions on that? Is that perfectly clear? Yes? Okay. Uh, Good. Yeah. Would you explain how it works with the 18 month warranty? So uh, I we... Mean, I got the part the 12 going 18, but right. how, how do we process that? We just, we charge them for it? No, no, no. You don't process anything. Okay. Uh, all right, I'll go back to that because it's a question probably others have. At closing, there's a warranty paid for in like nine out of 10 real estate transactions in in America. Yeah. And it's by itself. It's a $400 thing. It's a $600 thing. It's what I sell primarily. That is negotiated at the time of the purchase agreement. They say, you know, seller to purchase a warranty up to X amount of dollars. So you have an agent on one side, an agent on the other side, and a buyer, all of which know this warranty is going to come at closing. They probably have an idea of who they're going to order it from, but they may not have already ordered it. They get an inspection from you, and then boom goes the dynamite. You have an email that shows up to the buyer and to the listing agent and to the buyer's agent that says, hey, if you're getting a warranty at closing, which you probably are, click this link and it'll be for 18 months. It'll have no pre-existing conditions, and it'll, it will cover the underground sewer lines for the full 18 months. And they go, ooh. And so what percentage of people click on that link and buy in your case, Rob? 15% of my home inspections buy it. 
about 15% of all of his home inspection clients using his email drip campaign go, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. They press the button and then every single time we send a check to them. Right, and, and we sent out the emails to start that process? I will get to that after he's done. I'll, I'll, cause yeah, you can, I mean, for those of you that are taking good notes and you know how to write a good email, cause most of, most inspectors I meet, they sign up for home gauge services or they sign up for ISN or they even sign up for next inspect our administrative software and they just go okay this looks pretty good you have a confirmation email I'm going to use that but their confirmation email even my own sucks you know it's like one line it doesn't do anything it doesn't sell anything yeah. and what and one thing that Rob does very very effectively um, and you need to understand something just going back to the 90-day warranties the inspection warranties here for a second this may surprise you I want claims. I want as many claims as possible. Here's what I mean. Thank you. <laughs> no, Preston does a great job of helping us with that because he goes out and, and he puts out these flyers that says, hey, we offer all of these warranties. Make sure your clients know about these warranties. In Houston alone, I mean, there's probably what, four, uh, 440 companies or 1,200 companies? Or what, what is it? As far as home inspection. 1,274 companies. Out of those 1,274, there's over 100 that offer our warranties. 50 of them don't even have them on their website. Another 25 have never ordered a single brochure that ever had it printed on. They just do it because it's like good for the customer. You know, they move in, they have a problem, and they feel good about that. I love those guys to death. But really, it's only the, you know, the inspectors that really get how to communicate that, that do a good job and get the return on investment for marketing dollars. And also, they give the best value to their client because their client moves in and when they have a problem, they know they have the coverage and they call us. Uh, and I want them to call us when they have the problem so that we write the check. Uh, and Rob does a great job of making sure we write lots of checks. So did I answer your question? Just fine now. Pretty much, I'll get some additional details. Sure, all right, carry on. Sorry, I just saw a confusion. I forgot what I was saying. Um, yeah, so that, uh, I, I didn't realize, we, you know, we didn't, everybody didn't understand what I was talking about here. So, um, 18 month warranty, um, we, I like to use it because number one, we get paid to, 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 to be a dealer for it. And number two, it's a, it's a liability reducer for us. So with the free warranties and the 18 month warranty on our inspection. So pretty much if, you know, no matter what goes wrong, it's, it's probably going to fall in one of those warranties and I can just send it to Nathan at that point. Um, uh, so it's, it's a really positive thing for us, but beyond just handling issues and pay and pay and warranty payouts and stuff that it's a marketing thing as well you know that's that's my message that's all I do is market warranties I don't ever tell anybody about a home inspection ever I tell them I'm gonna protect them after the home inspection is what I do and um, um, so it's 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 a really positive thing for, for us you know I started like he said I started using <coughs> the warranties uh, it was in 2016 um, and we were right about 900,000 in sales. So from 2016 to now, last year we did $3.2 million last year. So, um, and I'm shooting to go to $4.2 million this year. So we hammer the warranties to death. I mean, that, that's, that's our message. And that's, that's kind of what I'm talking about here is putting this message into all your email communication. Don't just use the out of the box confirmation email. It doesn't say anything. Sell your, sell your company and every single you know, communication you have with uh, all you know, all three parties that are involved here. Your question. You're using yep. ISN. Yeah. This time. Yeah. So sign up. Yeah. So you can set everything I'm telling you. You set it on you know autopilot. Really, it'll fire off on its own. Zone. Yeah. What have you done different for your previous team inspection? Uh, I haven't really. Pre-listing inspections aren't really big in my market. So I don't really do anything. Maybe. We just found that. We change it up for those because they don't want all this. All the warranties? They don't, yeah. yeah. My agents that are doing those a lot are like, stop sending those emails. I mean, they were not happy about it. Oh, you just don't attach it to the, that inspection type? We just type. limited the number of emails they were yeah. getting. Okay. So, but pre-listing, if you have, if you have a, the, the pre-listing package and the warranties on there, you know, they'll, the, the five-year roof leak warranty starts over at closing. So yeah, they, they have that there. What she's not saying they, they don't submit it. She's saying the emails that mm -hmm. went out because they oh, get an email. It's a different inspection like type, so they don't get all these emails. Client, five emails about 
Yeah, yeah they don't get them. Trying if, to worry about selling their house. Yeah, it's just it, we have a different inspection type for pre-listing inspections. It's a great value. Great value. Well, you don't tell them. You tell them. And have yeah. you told them maybe to put it in their uh, listing package when they're going to sell themselves as an agent? Um, probably. And educate them a yeah, little bit more. Yes. We had a question over here about yeah. uh, new construction inspections. Are you still selling the warranties yeah. on new construction? Oh, yeah. uh, well, I don't, I don't sell free, free warranties. Well the, well, the free warranties are you, because I'm I, I new to the uh, warranty thing. So, uh, on my, are you still adding the free warranties to your inspections? So you're still paying a fee for those. Those aren't free for you. Those are free no. for the so, you're not at, okay. I do, no, no. They're not free for me. I do add them to new construction. Yes. You still keep yes. them on the new construction? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, they're, they're pretty much on everything we do. The builder's got 12 months. Now you're off every so, Well, I'm talking about, he's talking about the free warranty free package. Sure. 90 days. The, oh, 90 days. So when I say, yeah, when I say free warranties, that's that's the sewer guard and the mold safe and structural mechanical warranties, all that stuff. Okay. But I still also do offer the 18 month home warranty on, on that stuff, on the new construction. Okay. Also. What about your one year warranty inspection? How does that even work? What do you mean? Well, okay. Like, for instance, I got a one year warranty on the budget. Right. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me get my DeLorean. I'm going to go back eight years to this presentation. <laughs> on the, um, but that's okay. You know, it's just, it's just, again, it's that complex web we weave. All right. You can go in and disqualify certain types of warranties based on certain types of properties, like condominiums that don't have a foundation or a roof, right? And all you have to do is get with your warranty rep. And in fact, we even have a box for that, that where they can go through all this. This piece of paper, fill it out on the back. It says, uh, account review and update with the inspector services group team. We find a lot of our clients like kind of lose some of these details or don't know, and then they think about something when they're here. Fine, let's schedule a little call, 20 minutes with one of our top four guys that know more about the systems than I do at this point, honestly, uh, will help a lot with those kind of questions. But the reason that you don't disqualify those certain types, which we've allowed for <coughs> technically, is that number one, they're not a majority of your business, some small yeah. part, so it's kind of a pain in the butt from an accounting perspective. Number two, there are benefits that, that apply to this even though they get some things that they would never use. You know, the, a 90 day mechanical warranty on a house that has all new mechanicals and has uh, contractor guarantees on all of them it is, you know, in the, in that it's not gonna be utilized. But by doing that, they ended up with a five year roof leak protection policy and even the new construction guys limit that to four. And when I say four, that's four years of like real structural problems, not necessarily a, a flashing leak all the time. Um, and yeah, they do qualify for the mechanical warranties. The mechanical warranties only go to 12 months. They don't have to buy it with a start date of the day they close. They buy it a year out. Now, I don't want to get into too many details like that because we just handle that on our side. We have an 800 number they call. It's open 24 seven. Those are questions that would come from the client and you'd never have to know anything other than go here, call here. All right, so uh, back to the 18 month warranty. Before <laughs> our inspection, all, all three parties, listing agent, buyer's agent, client, they get an email that says, hey, when we inspect this house, it's gonna be eligible for an 18 month warranty. Click here for more information. Click here goes to our website. So they, it's all kind of information on the warranty there and they can also order the warranty from there. Um, so it's all, you know, it's all automated to where I don't really do anything besides just offer it to them an email. All right, so after the inspection, the same, you know, I get other emails that go to all three parties and it says, hey, this home now qualifies for the 18 month home warranty and I and the price drops in. So I have a formula in there that just drops the price in based on the square footage. So they get, and they now know the home qualifies for those 18 months and you got a uh, price in there. All I gotta do is click here to order it. All right, so let's talk about uh, add-on services, okay? So we send an email out, it goes out 30 minutes after the inspection is booked offering uh, add-on services. That's when we're gonna offer our radon, we're gonna offer our you know, termite inspection, <coughs> we're gonna offer mold uh, sampling, we're gonna offer packages at that time in this email. Um, so uh, this email goes out and gives, gives information on all the services. And even if they've already bought one of these add-on services, we still give them the information because it's reinforcing their decision to buy that. 
come on your way. All right, so, and we give the price for, for all the add-on services. So when you, you, if you design an email like this, you know, try to think of it like, uh, like Amazon. When you buy someone on Amazon, you know, customers who bought this also bought this, right? So you try to maybe make the client feel a little bit like, I'm missing out if I, you know, everybody else is buying these other services, I need to get this, okay? <laughs> so you, so you, you can work your packages into this email. So this email alone will make you money. If you're not sending out an email offering add-on services, you're, I mean, it's, it's just, it's so simple, it'll make you money. So just add that to, you know, whatever software system you're using. And, and uh, then tell them, make sure you tell the client what to do to uh, add that service. Do you want them to call you? Do you want them just to email you back? What do you want them to do? add that service and then make sure though you have information on your website on these services so they can link so this email can link to you know your termite inspection information your mold inspection information make sure that stuff's there you know like Nathan said you can look at a lot of a lot of people are paying Nathan to offer these warranties and stuff and you wouldn't even know it they don't even tell anybody it's not on their website it's, it's ridiculous so uh, same with these add-on services some you know, a lot of inspection companies you can't even find that they do certain services it's not there All right, so um, who, who sends out an initial confirmation email, like after the booking? You get a confirmation email go out? Yeah, okay, so this one uh, should, should definitely clearly communicate everything that you're gonna do, you know, what you need to happen to make that inspection go off, and then <coughs> you should tell them your, your message. My message is free warranties and the 18-month warranties. I'm telling them about that. I'm saying, hey, you know, don't forget, your, your inspection's gonna come with free warranties and it's gonna come with the 18-month uh, home warranty, all right? Um, and then I verify if you're a recall check user, this is the email to verify their cell phone or their, their phone number here so you don't get charged extra for having a wrong phone number. All right, so here's an example. This, one's, this email is a little bit old, but it's an example of our initial confirmation email that goes to a client. So this one here, right in the, right in the beginning, I'm setting an expectation that, hey, you've got you to pay me and you've got to sign our agreement or, or you're not getting your report. So I'm telling them that, I'm telling them that right up front in the confirmation email. And then I'm saying in the second paragraph, hey, remember, your inspection comes with free five-year roof leak warranty, 90-day structural mechanical warranty, blah, blah, blah. And then, and, then, um, and then down here, once inspected, the property be eligible for 18-month home warranty backed by RWS, National Home Warranty Provider. Click here for more information. All right, listing agent confirmation email. All right, again, I'm... Tell them, in case you haven't heard, RIA uh, complete home inspections come with five-year roof leak warranty and on and on and on. Okay, it's also gonna be eligible for 18-month home warranty, so I'm telling that listing agent the same thing. All right, so um, then we send an inspection reminder email after the booking. Um, it's more concise, but it's, gonna, it's still gonna remind them of the warranties, uh, free warranties and 18-month home warranty. All right, so before the inspection even happens, the client is being told our message three times, at least three times. Buyer's agent's been being told twice, listing agent's being told twice. That's before the inspection even happens, all right? So we're, we're making sure everybody's aware of what we offer and the value we provide and why they should be using us, why they shouldn't cancel on us, why they should be referring us. Uh, so we're telling them that stuff over and over and over and over again. All right, um, do you guys do a meet your inspector email that goes out and Anybody do that? No? You do? Okay. So just make sure, yeah, we, we use that email and it goes out, just has a picture of the inspector and, and it, it, it tells, it sets the uh, expectation of when we want them to, to arrive so they don't just show up like four hours into it and inspect us to stay there another hour. All right. So this is an email that we really use to um, uh, sell the 18 month warranty. This is the report is ready email. Okay. So this is the one that I know for sure they're going to open because they want to see their report. So when they open it, you know, it's, it's going to say, hey, the home now qualifies for your 18-month warranty for 475 Click here for information. So I'm, I'm getting that right in there on that, on that uh, warranty. And that, and that can be all done automated through ISN if you're using that. Um, and then, um, you know, I use this email to reinforce expectations. I have like a video of, <coughs> of you know, what, what, you know what's, what a home inspection is and what it's not that's in there. So I kind of try to re reinforce the expectations to try to limit complaints on stupid stuff. All right, so here's the, the sending the report that goes to the buyer's agent. This home now qualifies for 18-month warranty for 560 bucks. Get 18 months coverage for the price of 12. 
So that's in there right away, and the report is ready. All right, so after the inspection is completed, we do a uh, thank you email, but we don't say thank you in the subject line. We say 18-month home warranty is now available. That's our uh, subject line for that. And of course, we do thank them in the email, but we're telling them this, this warranty is now available for this home. Uh, okay, so yeah, here's an example of that email. Um, it's telling them, so you can see the subject line, and then it's telling them that, that they can get the warranty. And then I list a bunch of benefits for the warranty, all, all the reasons why this warranty is better than the other ones. I list them all right there. Okay, so uh, other communications that we use, we used uh, a, a quote email. Do you guys send a quote email, like when somebody calls in for a quote? Do that? Okay, so we, we do that, and then, and, but we also reinforce our message during that, and we also do a, um, a follow-up quote email. If they don't book, we send another email, you know, asking them to book and telling them, you know, why they should book with us. All right, so, you know, important takeaway is kind of what we talked about today. Um, get a compelling message, whatever that message is. Warranties are an easy message to deliver if you, if you package it correctly. Get a message and tell people over and over and over. Um, and track your new agent capture. Make sure you guys start to track that and know that number. And then um, follow up and ask for business. So where most home inspectors fail, I think, in marketing is they do presentations. They spend a bunch of money to sponsor lunch. They don't follow up and ask for the business. So the next day after your presentation, you should be on the phone calling these people and saying, hey, who do you use for home inspections? You know, can, I, can I be your number two if you already have somebody? You know? um, did, you, did you have any questions about my presentation? What, what can I help you with? How can I be a better partner for you? Get them on the phone and, and, and follow up and just ask for the business. You know, it's, it's, it's an easy thing to do and it'll change, it'll, it'll change the, growth, the growth trajectory in your company. So, I'm done. Anybody have any questions? Right, now one question. Hold on, hold on. How many inspections did you do last year? Me? Yeah. 7,800. Uh, well, in the last 12 months, I've done 7. Last 12 last, months. Last year, right. 6,000 something. Anyone do more than 5,000? All right, you should have at least one damn question. Go ahead. How many inspectors do you have? 21. 21. Including yourself, or you don't do it? No, I don't do inspectors. So, the, the, um, <laughs> what I'll tell you, what, what, what my belief in, the, in this business is, is if you're marketing your technical ability or you're saying anything about technical you will eventually lose you'll lose to somebody like me all right so and if you're not thorough in your communication you will lose all right so um, I think it's moving more and more away from the technical part of this business like I never ever like I said never talk about a home inspection I don't think Sean ever talks about a home inspection so it's 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 um, it, it, so if you're marketing in that way or if you're marketing a tool that you have you're gonna lose you know Yep. Where do you find your guys to hire? Um, when at, when you when you're doing like the the volume that we do, they come to us. Really. All right. So <laughs> well, let, let's take let's get in the DeLorean for you then. Okay. When you had ten guys and you needed number eleven. Um. So I, in my area, so there's you know Ashy is bigger in our area, so I email that list of. Ashley certified people and then offer a signing bonus. So you offer a $3,000 signing bonus and then you just pay that out over time. And it gets, it gets at least gets people to, to inquire about the So you the don't job. train people necessarily other than your, your program. You get people already qualified. Sure, sure. Our, our life. Well, but you, I mean, you've trained people too. For yeah, I've done both. Yeah, um, once you get in rapid growth mode, which I, I feel like I'm in right now, I don't really have time to train people from scratch. I gotta bring in people that already have some sort of background so I can get them in the field quickly. Who are you currently using for your booking? Uh, in scheduling? Answer your phone. Okay, so I have three I have three of my own people. Um, they and I have one lives in North Carolina, one lives in Tennessee, and one lives in Georgia. And so our phone system bounces it around and then overflow goes to Nathan's call center and then he does after hours for me. So my phone's gonna answer twenty four seven. So that's another thing. If your phones aren't answered 24-7, you're missing business. So, I mean, I'll, we'll book six, seven inspections just on, on a Sunday afternoon. We'll book inspections at 1 o'clock in the morning. It's weird. Let we'll me give you guys a, a 
just a super simple explanation of something that we're going to uh, pull out that card again. So if you wanted us to create the package model for you, write packages. If you wanted those free brochures, write brochures. Over here in the bottom right corner, if you like what I, I'm about to say and you go, yeah, that sounds like a pretty good deal, I'd really like to do that, just write the word top. So for 350 bucks a month, let me tell you what we do for you as a call center, as a backup call center. That's basically what most people pay for our call center services at this point as a baseline is 350 bucks. We'll program your phone so that whenever you're unavailable or when it takes you more than four times to answer your call or if you, even if you have a whole office staff, two or three people, if none of them can answer it, it'll roll over on the fourth call. It'll come over to our call center. And I look at numbers every day and uh, I'll give you a, a number today for our call center. Every single day I see this number in the morning at around 10 a.m. There it is, office phone report. Uh, yesterday our average time to answer a phone call with a live person was one minute and 47 seconds. Goes into a queue like when you call American Airlines or whatever, except for it doesn't take an hour, it takes two minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we answer the phone and our job at that point is so long as you're on ISN or Next, those are the only two platforms that we utilize, <coughs> we will take the order. We're not like, you know, on crack and, you know, making a big sales pitch. We're taking an order, right? <coughs> it's mostly real estate agent referrals that are pretty strong. That's that's what we kind of specialize in. But you don't have to hand your phones over to somebody. Just give them, like, just give over the overflow and still have an office manager or yourself go through, look at every single appointment, make sure it works great. If we actually book an order for you and put it in the system, then we charge you 25 bucks, only if you get paid. <coughs> if we do more than 20 of those in a month, because you have a ton of calls coming in, we're gonna charge you 17 every one thereafter. For every 10 phone calls, we're gonna book one order. That means we're making between $1.70 and $2.50 for every miserable phone call we take with someone asking where their report is, or soliciting your business, or whatever calls we take all day, right? Uh, and for that same $350 flat fee, no inspection fee for the following two things. Uh, one is we up your commissions on those warranty sales that he's hitting 15% of their people with to 50 bucks. And we upgrade your 90 day warranty to what we call the 90 day plus. And that covers refrigerators, pools, sump pumps. We just added basically anything anyone could complain and didn't include like washers and dryers. We added it in. So that's, that's, 350 bucks a month and then you are answering your phones at that point 24 7 with a person in Carmel Indiana we even answer at 2 o'clock in the morning on New Year's Eve so there you go I guess that's not that impressive because everyone's still up from drinking um, we answer at 3 o'clock in the morning on Christmas Day all right and we have to pay our people uh, triple time to do that and there are people that do nothing but answer for home inspection companies and they do okay they don't do, do as well as your staff right for yeah. you it's better than voicemail though way better than a voicemail. So if you literally never want your clients to get a voicemail, it pays for itself pretty pretty damn quickly, yeah. right? What other questions do we have for Rob, operationally, et cetera? Home inspection questions, sorry, I'm going okay. on. on that note, uh, with the volume you're doing, uh, it's your, you said you have a three-person staff, is your three-person staff able to answer your phone calls? Uh, about 70% <laughs> of them, the rest of them go to him. And uh, I, mean, I think that's a good ratio because I mean, we were discussing yesterday, if I, if I go too high on that, then I'm overstaffed in the slower times. And so I, I, that's, that's about what I want to answer is 70, 75% of my calls. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, and then everything else rolls to him. And, it's, it, and you'd be surprised when people book inspections and you start looking at what time they got booked. Yeah. You know, and By the way, all four of our guests here are in that exact same category. They all, they all do the rollover, but they're working you know, with our staff, and all four of them have staff at their offices and multiple staff members. Uh, so it just depends on your size of business, right? If you can, if you can manage most of your phone calls with one staff member, do not hire a second and try to justify it to yourself that oh, um, they can do some paperwork I'll figure out for them to do. You know, when they're sitting there, no, you're just burning cash. You're going to spend way less on a call center. 
and we and we track uh, closing percentage with with you know with our staff. We track add on percentage, how many times they added on something to the inspection. We track all those numbers, and you know because for me, if I can raise closing percentage five percent, that's hundreds of inspections for me. Uh, if I can do that, so we work really hard on doing that kind of thing. We track it. Sean tracks it really hard uh, in his business. Yep. Any other questions for Rob? Thanks. Go ahead, Natalie. Okay. So, like between the while, I have so many questions. Not, don't even tell me. So, you said your home was your most valuable asset, right? And then you're up there doing all these numbers. So basically, if you sold, if y'all sold seven home warranties, right? <coughs> Fifty boxes. Your three hundred fifty is covered, right? Yep. Done. Then you're gonna uppy duppy your uh, little guy by thirty four dollars to get the premium package. That's like nine cents a day for a year or seven. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's per Starbucks. inspection. It should be. Yes, okay, but it's 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 five Starbucks to the client. It's so. nine cents per hour time. No, it it's none of that. But it, it's yeah, a it's a small it's, fee per inspection. Yeah, to your but point. If you're trying to sell your client. It's like a few Starbucks. It, it's they're spending one hundred and fifty thousand dollars on that house. I mean, this is awesome. Like. Well, moreover, they're doing a, a big thing, and um, Patty and Phil. I call them Patty and Phil during the business hours. Uh, some I, I would call them mom and dad, but you know, when I was thirteen, I started answering the phone, and it would sound really professional if you said, "Security home inspections. This is Nathan. How may I help you?" Oh yeah, I think she's around here. Hey, ma. You know, like that wouldn't sound professional at all. So she's Patty during the business day. When they started sending out emails this, that reminded people of the warranties themselves, their cancellation percentage dropped dramatically, like cut in half, all, it, just overnight. Because now it's not just somebody that calls back and says, oh, that guy that I got his voicemail did call me back. He's $100 cheaper than you. I'm going with that other guy. They might not say they're $100 cheaper than you, but they, they just said, we booked with another guy, we're canceling for whatever reason. Right. And they never had a reason to question his services. Yeah? Uh, how often, this is your numbers guy, uh, I'm sure you guys have numbers, how often are you uh, transferring those listing agents, because you're sending those emails, the same emails you're sending to the buyer's agents, how often are you transferring those into your agents? Conversion of listing agents into the buyer's number. agent. No, that's what I don't have. Uh, that's, that's one I'm really working true. on in, yeah. in, on my side. It's a good call. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good one. Then the call is being yeah. left at the door. You know, you have an automated, I mean, you're not at the door, left at the houses that your guys are inspecting. Yeah. I've always, that's, I don't do it personally, but I've <coughs> always left revenue, left agents that have buyers, at, yeah. you know, that you can be reaching out to and selling these warranties to. Yeah. You know, so I don't know there's an easy way to track that, though, like listing agent capture, because I don't know that the software systems will track that. Um, they will, and actually we have one, we have a way to track it. Uh, I currently cannot track it. I'm, I'm, I'm building that, don't worry. I could probably could manually, but it wouldn't you know, take too long. Uh, that, that's a really good thought. I, I don't track that number. Yeah. Good thought though. It's a great number I mean, to that's, that's what you're pushing, so when you're pushing, you know, as many mm -hmm. emails you're pushing to your buyers, they do. Well, that's the other thing. Like, we have this idea that we can't share the report with other parties, right? It's, it's the buyer's report, and then the buyer has to agree to sell it, you know, share it with their agent. Well, let's just make it automatic in our contract that's shared with their agent, okay? It's their agent. That's what they're there to do is review this stuff. Um, but I, I think most inspectors don't build into the agreement automatic sharing with the listing agent. So most inspectors, therefore, don't have the ability to show any of their work product nothing about their business to a listing agent, which is unfortunate because you run into just as many of them as you do your buyer's agents. Uh, and, and that's what a lot of these emails do. Because talking about warranties and giving uh, a link to go buy an 18 month warranty over 12 for probably less than they were paying for the other one, it's a huge benefit, but you didn't have to share a report to do it. Uh, the recall check report will go out to the other parties. That doesn't violate anything. Yes, sir. How do I get around track requirement? Did I have a written authorization to you put it in the agreement. You standardize it. And and I, this was the first change I made. I will give myself a little bit of credit here for when I started doing some marketing for my uh, parents' home inspection company as a late teen. I said, you know, how many calls a week are we taking from buyer's agents going, hey, where's my report? And then we pull the PIA. We all we had nothing but acronyms. Uh, and we pulled the PIA and we pulled the paper PIA and the guy didn't check the box. And then we got to pick up the phone, call the buyer, you know, and, and have him initial something and send it back. And I said, why don't we just by default check this box or just build it into the verbiage and say, we will send a copy to your agent. If you don't want us to let, let us know or make them check a box that says, don't share it with anybody. And at that point, then what did we do? 
this was a great move on our part because we made a lot of great relationships with agents. It used to be, where the hell is the report? Oh, well, they didn't check that box. Now it was, we pick up the phone proactively, call an agent where a buyer said specifically, don't share any information with my agent. And when we do that, the buyer's agent would thank us like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this guy would, would do that. And he's been problematic for me already. He doesn't follow any of my instructions. We are, are heading for trouble in this transaction. And you just help me know one more uh, thing with that so I can help manage my client. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I do that. I put that in my contract. I just deceived him. No, you did not deceive. No, no. no and let me tell you, you, you need to get around that mentally. And let me help you with that. I'm sorry, I, I, I talk, I've spoken to 10,000 inspectors. Uh, you might have spoken to a few less, and I need to help him a lot on this. This is a mindset change for you. That's not deception. The typical and customary real estate transaction process is that at some point, a buyer is going to sit here with a report and go over it with their agent. And they're going to have to discuss it because the agent is the one that writes the inspection response, right? They have to write that sheet of paper for that contingency. How are they going to meet their fiduciary duty of representing their client in writing that inspection contingency if they don't have the facts of the inspection? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you're making it so you think you have to explain it because you believe that there's some ethical obligation that you keep this list of defects, which is virtually public knowledge. I mean, anyone who walked by it and saw it would know about it, right? Um, th that it has to be some confidential secret thing, like we should walk around with inspection <coughs> reports in a suitcase chained to our wrist. And that's not what inspection reports are. I think we're just concerned about track. No, well, don't be good. We're also talking about the reports where this track is not. No, 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 no. We are talking about reports. We are talking about reports. Make it so the standard in your verbiage is, I mean, th there's a guy that does 1,500 inspections in the state of Texas right behind you nodding his head. I'm assuming you made it kind of standard. It's just, yeah, it's yeah, it's just, just standard. Has right. anyone said, you deceived me, oh my God? No, okay. we had one person a year that said, I want one of my buyers. Exactly. And when that happened, did you pick up the agent, uh, pick up the phone, call the agent, and say, hey, just wanted you to let you know this happened or send an email or something? Yeah, it, uh, but hey, for once, why make a policy? So any other questions? Last one for Rob. Are you sure, Mark? Mike, I know. It was a joke uh, this time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the emails that uh, you're sending out automatically to IS, uh, well, through ISN, I interesting thing, like I just signed up with IS and I'm doing like a two hour introductory uh, class on how to operate ISN tomorrow morning. Um, and so I'm very interested in, in that. Do you have an email possible template? Concerning we don't do a template on it for okay. a number of reasons. Uh -huh. And it's about the customization of that. Yeah, yeah. You know, what he did, he took a, a, a lot of work to figure out how it would best work yeah. to, to sell the most ancillary services, sell the most 18 month warranties, yeah, yeah. reduce the most cancellations, you know, all those things. And, and there's a lot of differences in his email to what your email might say, because this thing's reading 0.2 pico curious per liter pretty consistently all day long in you know Houston where there's no radon. Yeah. Um, whereas in his market, there's radon everywhere. So the, the, te the email templates are very different. I already told you guys today, so for the latecomers, that I would you know actually design brochures, print them, put a FedEx label on them. That, that is a huge cost to me. I'm willing to do that for free. Uh, I'm willing to put together the packages for free, essentially do a launch and make something work really well. Um, the thing that I can't do for free is all the work it takes to put together those emails. On the back of the sheet, yeah. you'll see a $650 fee to do that. We have ISN experts that do nothing but work in ISN all day in our call center, yeah. right? <laughs> they log in, they actually build the emails, put them in, implement them, make them so they go out. And before they even do that, they have to send you a questionnaire about your business in order to customize those templates enough. You have to answer like 20 or 30 questions. I don't know. It's a, it's a pretty decent questionnaire in order for us to build that. And it's built by hand and everyone is, you know, typed out. So um, that's the only thing that if, if there's anything in here that has a, a dollar sign behind it, it's that. But it's very well worth it. And, you know, look at the results. Rob, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Rob. All right, so, um, you know, 
In order to get to that point where we have fewer inspectors running enterprises, having good return on investment, so, you know, this is a lot today. A lot of information from Rob, a lot from Wally. Uh, I mean, you're doing 1,500 inspections a year. Did you already have a package thing put together? Yeah, I've seen them start to come out, but that's a good number. Guess where they started. Yeah. Uh, so, so you, I mean, but here's the thing: even at 1,500 inspections a year, multiple inspectors certainly you didn't do all of those yourself, right? Okay, good. Um, but with, even with five inspectors, you know, you didn't have a boardroom and a director of operations and a general manager and a marketing director, you know, and, and all of the resources to really make you know this stuff happen the way that it should happen. And I think the future of home inspections that you would have that, right? That you. What's the difference between you at fifteen hundred home inspections a year, making in reality forty to eighty dollars, depending on on where you're at per inspection uh, that you don't do, uh, and you doing five thousand inspections a year and making one hundred and twenty five? You know, it's not a huge difference. It's only a few minor changes, but we have to have the time to make those changes. So again, for those of you who weren't here during Wally's. Uh, presentation it's okay it's Houston traffic uh, we will build this template for you of the packages and we'll do it for free I mean it, the implementation part is uh, is tough so we've talked a little bit about uh, the next structural warranty uh, within the first month I had my first claim and just last week I mean I only hear about claims that they hit a certain level because we take about 20,000 claims a month so if it is over, uh, let's see, if it's over $1,500 now is the threshold where I get to see it, or if they said the word attorney more than once. <laughs> um, and, and they do that quite a bit, especially if you're like a walking liability like this next guy. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this, uh, but, you know, everybody I, I met here, I met in different ways. You know, Wally I met through a family friend turned uh, consultant and coach for home inspectors. Uh, 10 years ago. Uh, Preston I met much in the same way but later, more at a, a more pro promotional event than the uh, mastermind event. Uh, Rob found me, I don't even know how, he just kind of walked in the front door and I said there's an inspection company in Atlanta you know, doing that kind of volume I hadn't heard of. I, I was uh, thrown. But the next guy called me like basically the day he was going to launch his home inspection business or, or more more or less. I'll let him tell the story about that. But in two years, two years, he got his business two million bucks. And this guy, I mean, if you're thinking about questions you'd want to ask somebody from a business perspective, start thinking of them and, and, uh, and putting them pen to paper now. Uh, you're going to want to hear from this guy. He's a jerk. Sean Rossbach. Uh, I mean, you should be mad if you if you didn't do two million bucks in your first two years, which I'm not sure it's ever happened other than with this guy. Um, you know, you should be mad in some ways. So let's. He can make you mad now. Enjoy. Hey everybody, I'm Sean from Max Home Inspections, and uh, like you guys, I'm here for the food. Yeah. All right, good start. Uh, two two drink minimum, guys. So please drink up. There's some coke in the back. Um, I'm here to tell about the story uh, of how I got here. Um, so my mom was born in, um, just kidding, that's nothing to do with that. All right, so we'll get started. Uh, right button. No, just use the, the right arrow on the bottom right side of the keyboard. So not this, you handed Don't me this and this. That. Just, that doesn't work. All right. So first time I spoke to Nathan, I, I was at an Ashley <laughs> conference uh, talking to people and they said, hey, you, you need to meet this guy, Nathan. Especially because I had an idea, I'm like, you know what? What I'm doing is not working. I need to do something new. I'm looking for a new business opportunity. And I heard of this home inspection thing. I didn't know what it was at the time. Um, they said, well, talk to Nathan before you do anything. Great. So, uh, so I reached out to Nathan and I was like, hey, uh, you know, I heard some stories. Let's talk. Uh, two hours later, I had an idea of what I wanted to do, but I was still kind of like, I don't know. So I went to a conference called Three Days of Secrets. Anybody heard of that? A couple people. Over here, Mike Grove, nobody? Uh, not too often. I well, anyways, I went to this conference, and there was a, a bunch of people there, and they asked a question. They're like, you know, who here is making a million dollars? And I looked around, and a whole bunch of people stood up, and I was like, what is home inspections, right? Somebody can make a million dollars in this? Never thought I could make a million dollars in any business. Uh, and then after that question, they go, all right, now sit down, unless you're using the RWS warranties. And, like, most of the room is still standing. I'm going, okay, one, two, three, 95 people here are making a million dollars with uh, warranties. <coughs> well... Anybody here think the decision was pretty easy to start doing this? Right. I mean, like, why would I do anything else? So the answer was clear for me. All right, I'm going to do the home inspection. 
and I'm going to be using warranties. Now I just got to figure out what to do next. So here's the reason that I, I went with uh, the warranties, and this is this is kind of important. Um, one, the warranties are a big deal to help people. When I get up and I speak to people, I don't go, hey, uh, we're doing the best home inspection possible. I mean, that's kind of like the given. You know, we're going to do a good job. Anybody go to anybody who goes, I do like an okay job. I mean, you're just going to you're gonna do the best job you can. You know, sometimes you do great, sometimes you do all right. But the overall is we're doing a good job, so that's a given. So what you really want to follow up is, is how you do something different than other people. Not only are we a given that we're going to do a good job, but we're going to take care of you long after the fact with the warranties, right? If something breaks within nine days, you're covered. If the roof leaks within five years, you're covered, right? So I'm not giving the message that we're doing a good home inspection. I'm giving safety, security, reliability, someone to answer the phone after. I mean, like Rob said, he goes, I want those calls. Call me if there's ever a problem. When we leave an inspection, I don't tell people, hey, uh, you know, if anything happens in 90 days, call me. I go, if anything happens in 10 years, call me. At least I can find the right person for you. All right, I mean, that's kind of what we do. I'm like, just letting people know that we're there for them. Is that like more comforting for people? <coughs> Would you be more comfortable if somebody left and goes, hey, if there's any problem in 10 years, just you know, come on back? Right, that's what you want to know. At least I, like, at least I believe I can count on them. We'll see what happens next. So let's go into the customer support side of that. You're like, well, what happens when you call somebody a long time later? I mean, so I get this call. I just moved into my house and my air conditioner doesn't work. Anybody get that call before? Yeah. Yeah, how many times a day? More times than the amount of inspections you do? All right, well, it happens all the time, right? So it's easy, oh, hey. So happy you did an inspection with us. That's covered. Let me send you the warranty information. Call RWS. Oh, okay. The problem solved. They have a solution. Now, what happens when they call with something that's like clearly not covered? You know, I, I found the Terminator in my attic and he's knocking down, you know, the rafters. What do you do in that situation? That's right. That's absolutely covered. Call Nathan's warranties. They're going to help you out. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> because I'm not getting yelled at anymore. They can yell at somebody else. So now they're off of my plate, and they're at least, they believe I'm on their side, helping them get the warranty coverage, which I am, and if it's not covered, that's not my fault. It's the warranty. All right? But at least now they're happy with me, which makes the realtor happy with me, which makes the client happy with me, and they can tell everyone, hey, look, you know, they tried. At least they tried. Anybody argue with that one? No, but at least we tried, and, that, and that's the whole point of this. Um, and again, like I said, I just blame everything on the warranties. Yeah, oh man, I'm sorry that's not covered, but you know, it's in the report and I'm sorry the warranty's not paying you, but probably because it's in the report. So it's like another failover for you guys. It's another safety net. By the way, I'm terrible at customer service. When people call me, I generally yell at them. So, you know, it's all their fault, you know? And anybody agree, like it's usually the customer's fault anyways? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, I, I can't answer the phone. So usually I hand it over to my boss, which is whoever was just recently hired. I'm like, here, you gotta talk to my boss, they can help you. I just handle it to anybody else because I just I take it personally. So somebody else needs to handle that generally when they get mad. But if they're like, hey, what do I do? Hey, no problem. Covered by the warranty. Let me get you the information. Yeah. Um, the 24-7 is pretty cool. Anybody ever book an inspection at like 3 in the morning? Yeah. Personally, you guys are booking inspections at 3 in the morning? Go to bed. <laughs> all right. So I'm asleep by that point. Uh, but all of a sudden, I woke up one day and I was like, we booked two? What time? And I'm like, hey, Nathan, uh, you answer the phones at like 3 in the morning? Yeah, yeah, we got somebody 24-7. Oh, on Thanksgiving. Who booked inspections on Thanksgiving? <laughs> Five inspections were booked by the call center for me on Thanksgiving while I'm cutting a turkey <laughs> and almost causing a fire. Um, so, so that's like some fantastic stuff that makes me very comfortable. I go, okay, at least I know if my power <laughs> goes out and the phones are off in my office, the phones are getting answered. Anybody here can reliably say that? Right, that, that level of comfort that I know. And you know, they make mistakes just like anybody else in your office would. So once in a while I'm like, what happened with this one? And you know, the manager over there is like, oh, here's, like, great, now we can work on it. And we get text notifications back and forth, they're, they're great. And they fix problems too. Hey, uh, can you call them back and book that one? Like, that one should have been done. Yes, great people to work with. Um, and instant responses. Uh, he gives out his phone number to everybody and he likes to be texted at all times of day. All right. <laughs> All times a day. I'll give you his phone number. Let me see here. Okay. <laughs> He'll give it out, by the way. He does give it out to everybody. Um, so anybody ever have a problem and you're like, I don't know what the fuck to do with this guy? Nobody? I was like, I get like four a day. All right? And, and you know, that's not accounting the ones I get from my wife. All right? So the instant response is I just go, you know, hey, Nathan, uh, this guy is threatening this, this, and this. Like, what do I do? 
You know, generally it's, don't worry about it, here's what you could do next. Okay, great. You know, he's somebody that can help you at all points in your business. Nathan, I'm thinking about doing this. Uh, Sean, don't do that. I'm not doing that anymore. You know? Uh, hey, I want to do that. Hey, that's a great idea. Do that more. Anybody looking for that kind of stuff in their business? How about like a whole team of other people to help you that are in the same situation? Like businesses like Rob and, and Wally and myself and Preston, we're in these groups, the top groups. Be there. You know, we're always giving out information. It doesn't bother us. And, and by the way, anybody, you guys are in like my market where I'm in Florida. I'm friends with the guys that are near me. There's one company that's bigger than me and him and I are friends all the time. Why? Because it doesn't matter. There's so much opportunity out here. We could all be million dollar companies in the same market and it won't matter. So just, just go from there. I'm used to having the button, so I stepped too far away. All right, so I decided to do some hard work. Somebody sat with me and said, Sean, what do you want to do? Because I'm like, I don't know if I want to start the business. And, and he goes, you know, it's what you want. And I'm like, okay, I want a bunch of people to work for me. I want to be able to take vacations one day. Anybody take vacations? Anybody know what those are anymore? Um, you know, and, and I want money coming in, and like, uh, if I don't feel like going to work today, I still want to make cash. Who's up for that? Yeah, one day I'll take a vacation. But uh, I got my license in April 2016 after somebody told me this. Because by the way, I was in IT, and like, I, I still can't do plumbing. I, I put new pipes on my fish tank, and it leaked all over the floor. So I'm bad at all of this. Um, got my license in April 2016 after somebody said, sometimes opportunity looks at hard work and a pair of overalls. And I go, I guess I'll try something new. So I decided to get my license. After I got my license, my first month, I got 14 inspections. You guys don't think that's a lot, but my wife was almost gonna leave me. She's like, you're not making any money. All right, and I was like, I made 14 inspections, so I'm 400 bucks, and I was like, look at this. I got money going, now we're going to dinner tonight. All right, um, so the first year, my goal was 1,000. And I set the 1,000 goal. Anybody know how I set 1,000 as the goal? Somebody said the most anyone's ever done is 300. I go, I'll do 1,000. So I, I didn't hit the goal at all. I hit 880, but that's 300K in the first year. And I mean, I started in April, so I give myself a little credit. Maybe I could have done it had I had another month or two. Um, so 880, followed up quickly by 3,000 the first, I mean the second year, and of course missed my goal again, just breaking the million dollar mark. I mean I was calling my mom, hey you need an inspection at your house, I gotta break this million dollar mark. Uh, year three, which is last year, uh, goal was 5,000 again, somebody screwed it up, look at that, 4,900, 44 units short, hitting the 2 million, we were 2.1, so I was way over the line there, super happy about that. And uh, year four, I know this is crazy, but we're going for 12,000 units. So even if I miss it, I'm still gonna do pretty good. Uh, we're going for five million in revenue. You're not gonna do it, you're gonna fail. Yeah, uh, and, and it doesn't bother me that people tell me you're not gonna do it, because I haven't hit any other goals, but does that bother me at all? No. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> but if I don't set the bar high and I go, oh, you know, I already hit my goal, then what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna go to the beach and hang out. Right? Like, I did it. So I'm just gonna keep setting it higher and higher so that I'm not in my own way of, of hitting my goals. Who wants to make $5 million in their company? By the way, this market here is just as good as mine. You can do it here. Hold on, hold on. Way more hands. Like, kind of There's only three up. people that want it. It's okay. In other words, way more hands that went up or started to go up than, than I thought. There's some that I know are wanting to hit $5 million, But honestly, this room, who, who wants a company that does $5 million by show of hands? Actually wants that. Wow. Okay. This is the. This is this probably is the best one. The best room by percentage of home inspectors I've ever been in that wasn't specifically an invite to people who had said yes to that. Yeah. Most people are like, I'm not interested in that. Yeah. By the way, uh, this is what I do at this point. I go and I talk to people most of my life um, because somebody else is doing the work. Uh, I've done a couple thousand inspections myself, uh, and I did them pretty well. But at this point, I, I can't do them. I haven't done them in a year. All right, who wants to not do inspections anymore? Oh. Okay, a couple people, a couple people. You don't like being in attics and under the houses and stuff? I, I gotta tell you though, between IT and this, I'd much rather be inspecting a house. Everybody yells at you in IT, everyone's happy in this. Um, so we have our, uh, our website that we, we've kind of grown with and uh, we have some chat features. I don't know if you're gonna be showing those off. I, I don't think my office is prepared for that. Um, but we've, we've grown to new territories via partnerships and we've done some pretty cool stuff. Uh, we were just recently featured on TV. Uh, it's actually airing March 9th. It's called Designing Spaces. So it's a fantastic show. Uh, basically, it's the competitor to HGTV. And uh, the first step is to establish that something is possible, and then probability will occur. Uh, anybody know Tesla, Elon Musk? OK. I mean, basically, everyone said, no, electric cars are nothing. Don't bother doing it. And you know, now I drive one. So I think it's the coolest thing ever. It's like living in a car 25 years in the future. It's great. Yeah. Uh, this is our promo. I have a graphic designer on staff. Uh, I have a staff of uh, just about 30 people. We need to update the picture anyways. Uh, and I mean, 
you get on TV and then it's like, hey, look at this, look what we did. And now everyone's in there going, whoa, look at these guys. And my competitors are like seriously scared shitless of us for no reason. <laughs> it's the ones that don't, that don't know me. I mean, once they know me, they're like, okay, you're like a cool guy and all. But that's the CEO. And they're like, I want Max to come do the inspection. He's, uh, he's four, so he does a great job. He shows up on all the pictures. Yeah, no, he's good for that. He gets in there. He's not scared of the snakes or anything. They just get in there. Um, voted best inspection company by our clients. Anybody here get voted best inspection company by their clients? Yeah, everyone should. I don't know why people aren't. Think about that, guys. All right. I think it's possible for ordinary people to choose to be extraordinary and uh, ask away questions. Uh, I have a question. So the last time you were in it, you said that phrase, you followed it up with, you know, the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra. It did. And, uh, you know, people kind of acknowledge that. I just wondered how many can name the movie that that came from? I can't even name the movie. It was Waiting. Really? The one with the, the waiters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, go on. Okay. Go on. We, we should have, uh, you know, so, so here's here's the guy that did two million, was on, on track to two million after his two years. Okay, yeah. so his third year was a two million. I've already done year. more inspections as of last week than I did my entire first year. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So what's your little well, extra? From January 1st to last week. Not the total last week. No, I, not there yet. What'd you say? So what's your little extra? I mean, so the thing about the little extra is, is all the little pieces that you build onto it. The fact that we have warranties, the fact that we talk about having warranties. I have competitors in my market that don't have warranties, but they do. And I get a, an agent called me yesterday and they go, it's so wonderful that you have it. My guy doesn't have them. And I'm like, yes, he does. So make sure you talk about these things. These are such like great advantages <laughs> for you. Um, you know, we have, we call it the, the, we make popcorn in the microwave. And for some reason, people really like that. Like, we tell people on site, here's the warranties you have that do, when you do the inspection with us. And we make sure that we bring the client, the buyer's agent, and the seller's agent to watch us talk about the, the warranty so that everybody there knows about it. And that, like, keeps the conversion process going, and we make it easy, and we try to make it fast. We're very flexible with people. Let me tell you largely before I get on to the next question. I, I see your hand. Um, you know, largely what our, our goal was, our mission when we went on the first segment of this tour, now the second segment. You know, we're not going to do, like, for those of you who are around, uh, I think it was six or seven years ago, Nick or Miko and I did a 45-city tour in nine weeks. If you've ever spent nine weeks with Nick or Miko, you know, it's, <laughs> then you, you actually absorb his voice and you can re repeat everything in his voice. It, it's it's uh, hysteria. Uh, but, you know, we've only done six, uh, or we're going to do six now. We might do another three. We'll see. But our, our goal was to go out to these rooms where, you know, it's largely users. I mean, the majority of people that we see in every room we go to are people that are already using warranties. That, that It's not a sales pitch thing. It's use this better, build enterprises. We, we purposefully put out the kind of advertisements and such that would bring the kind of people that want to grow a business and, and have enterprise value. So at the end of this thing, we try to make implementation easy to throw packages out there, increase your profits, because profits drive everything else. That means that you can afford to invest in expansion, which he does very regularly. Uh, you can automate a lot of your communications and make very effective connections with your clients and make money in ways that the other inspectors, you know, on average, gross, what one guy in this room is just making off his warranty commissions. I mean, it's stupid. Uh, and also automate the, the promotion. You know, we can make that brochure happen that really, you know, drives home a message. And you, I mean, you still have your whole page. You want to talk about all the quality and experience and everything else on that page and that custom content, do it. You know, experience is one of the things that people buy based on. And that's great. And if you have experience, you should, you should brag on that. My dad has a great you know, 35 years of experience and, you know, his 15 guys have a combined, gosh, 10 of them have been with him 20 years. I think, you know, he's got to have 300 years worth of experience or whatever. Um, that's all good, but have a real message that hits hard. Nick, you had a question. I just, you know, we have, we have very steady growth and I've, I've been kind of one of those guys that I'm always not uh, the first implementer of everything and I tend to, We're aware. I work on a, on a steady path, but <clears throat> with the, the the quickness with which you've gone from zero to hero, or however you describe it, whatever you know, whatever it is, I'm 
I, I think it's incredible your your growth. Have you did you find that the is there a was there a correlation or a pain point between the ability the capacity that was available versus the marketing that was going on? In other words, were the inspections coming faster than you had enough people, or would yes. you have more people? And you were prepared for that. I've been understaffed since day one, and today I can hire 10 people and have jobs for them. Right. Today. Gotcha. So build the long line, in other words. And I, I think I think that's just sound advice. You know, you don't want to overhire and have guys that, you know, go out on their own. I mean, uh, Phil and Patty probably trained 20 of the inspection companies that are in central Indiana. <laughs> you know, and then they leave because they... Uh, you know, decide after going to a chapter meeting or something that they're, you know, they'd rather make 100% as if there's no overhead and cost of being in business. Um, you know, it's it's crazy. Uh, by the way, chapter meetings, don't send your guys to them. Only you. Don't send them to things like this. Please don't ever. Do, you can bring your guys to the first three days of our, our uh, uh, Vegas conference, but don't bring them to Saturday unless they're like one of your marketing dudes or a director of operations or a general manager or a business partner. Don't bring inspectors to that. Other questions? <coughs> Let's see. So I'm daughter of a home inspector, um, owner of the business together now, and the way that he started 20 years ago looked a lot like the same you know, six-year-old guys did. How did you start that was different than that? Because if you had that growth, so you got your license, mm -hmm. and I'm guessing you started with a team. No, I was by myself. Sure. My he wife was on board with me. Roof. Not only was he on his own, but what was your inspection vehicle? Oh, I was driving a 335 BMW. I'd get calls, can you send the inspector with the cool car out here? So the first year, what would you like to tell me? That was the first two years I had that car. I just got rid of that car recently, in fact. No, I mean your startup, though. I mean, what was uh, It was me and my wife, and my wife would run into real estate offices and be like, we're really cool, talk to us, and then we started building relationships, and then... I would do one. I did a couple free jobs. I'm like, hey, just let me show up here. Uh, you know, we put out a bunch of flyers. We put out some coupons. I just wanted the phone to ring. And where's the job? I'm going there. And that's how we started. And we just kept going. And like, we did follow up. And like, we make sure that people are like 100% happy with us. Like, I tell everyone, check out our reviews online. Just you know, see what we're doing. Where did uh, how fast did you hire your first employee? Uh, not counting my wife, um, she uh, first she was inspector. first inspector. I hired my first inspector, which I fired a month after, uh, my second month in business. Uh, it was my brother. I thought it'd be a great idea, but it turns out he's pretty lazy. Uh, and I went and had to go redo 15 of his inspections to make people happy, which means I lost 15 others I could have done. But people were happy, and because of that, I got a lot of good credit from people for showing back up and redoing the job. And I promptly got rid of him, and then he asked me for a retirement. What? A pension for that? I, I didn't tell you the story. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's like, so what do I get for helping you here? Uh, fired. <laughs> we didn't talk for like so a year. So you hired inspectors immediately. I mean, that was well, I mean, I was already busy. I mean, when I was doing 15, I go, I think next month's going to be busy. Then I did like 40, and I was like, I need somebody right away to start training somebody to go with me. So I brought him along, and it was bad. And then the next guy I got, I got lucky with. And then the next guy I knew... And I just kept knowing, and actually we offer bonuses to our employees who bring people in because a referral from somebody inside of your office, they go, I know who I want to work with me in the office. So we get, we get a lot of resumes from people that we know from somebody, and they're not going to do a shitty job, and they're, they're, they're not going to bring a shitty friend in. I had some people go, I know some people, but they can't work here. Where'd you get that idea? Which one? The referral bonus from employees. I'd like to say I don't know, but I'm sure you told me. Okay. All right. Well, I, I'll just default. Uh, well, I mean, Nathan I told me. But I don't remember ever telling a home inspector that. I'm, I'm pretty good with my memory. Um, so we, we did this internally, too. You know, uh, one thing we, we found out, both of us have 30-plus job openings listed on our websites at any given time. Even if you have no intention of hiring 30 people tomorrow, you can still put the 30 job openings, right? You can look like a big enterprise and have a careers page. And if you want to find a, a great example of a careers page, go to residentialwarrantyservices.com. Go down to the bottom, click careers, and use that as a template. Swipe and deploy. It's all good. Um, but interesting, you bring that up. We were having trouble finding people in our call center. Right? Our call center was growing rapidly. We now serve more home inspection companies than anybody in that business. And we needed a lot of people. So we went to our own call center people and said, wow, you know, if people that are really good at talking hang out with other people, 
you know, they're probably pretty decent at talking too. We'll just give them a little bonus if they stay for more than 30 days. Yeah. And, and it worked great. We've had a couple of people come in and out that way, but generally we get people that want to be there a little more and don't want to do a bad job because their friend's working there. And you're kind of yeah. worried. We got kind of worried about friends being there, but it turns out everyone wants to show off that they're better. Here's what you don't want. Just a side note on that one because of all of I don't, I have a lot of shoes because I buy a pair of shoes every time somebody quits or gets fired. And I just have an enormous amount of shoes from bad employee experiences. People that don't disclose that they're related to somebody already in your operation and go through the whole application process, that person's going to be a nightmare. But if yeah. they're friends, they don't want to leave where their friends are. Yeah. No, you know, hey, hey look, look at me. Look at me. Just like this. Look. Oh. And a little, little extra. Uh, yeah, your, your saving of flavor is, is over. Uh, I'll save that for later. <laughs> Sorry, I was giving you a hint. Anything, any other questions? No, absolutely none. You really good care about them. Just make people happy. Let me. You attribute your success. I mean, like I said, everything's covered claims. So everyone's, of course, happy when everything's covered. Okay, so the guys that create the most claims for me do the best job. I have some great, uh, great friends. I mean, you know, we work with over 5,000 home inspection companies and 3,000 of them really, really suck at saying to anyone that they even offer warranties. I have people that are in that top category that do say it, you know, they put on their website and they, they put their promotional stuff out there that would like kind of defend me to the death. Like they, they feel like they, they don't want to harm me with, with an unnecessary call or something that's not covered and they think they're protecting me, but really they're just hurting both of us because they try too hard to make that claim not happen. Let the claim happen. I had an inspector tell me one time, I just took care of that. I told them to go away because you know you shouldn't be covering that one. I'm like, Dave, <laughs> I can handle it. You know, like we cover claims that shouldn't be covered all the time. It's just the nature of Very our business. True. You, you wake up to find defects. I wake up to write checks. Um, so we're gonna wrap this up pretty quick, but we had two questions over here. Oh, you, sir, you first. You know, do all of you inspectors use the same uh, software? Yeah, we, we have the same software. We're using what's going to be become HomeGage soon. Yeah, it's worked for us. We, it was called Home Hub Zone before it got purchased out. But everything's unified. You know, you go to McDonald's, everyone's using the same software at this McDonald's as that McDonald's. So you can't have one guy do this, one guy do that. And but do you, honestly, it doesn't matter which software. It doesn't you matter. Use. You can be very successful. My parents, multi uh, inspector <coughs> firm, multi million dollar firm. My mother would come here, but she'd scare you all to death. Um, she makes the butt cheeks tight. Um, they use Horizon. He uses Home, home Hub Zone. Rob, what do you use? Home Gauge. Horizon. Horizon. And there's two million dollar companies that use. Um, what is it? Whisper. So. Whisper. Okay. Yeah. So you know, there's, there's all sorts of options, and you know, candidly, it's not hard to get one that has a template that meets the Texas standards. Yeah. Uh, you got a question as well? Uh, I was just going to ask him. So when you got the training. Make everybody happy, right? They call back or say they they went to the warranty company or something that wasn't covered. You talked about this earlier. You just said, "Well, sorry," but in my in my uh, oh yeah, no, I I, I can't even handle that. Somebody else yeah. in my company has that because I'll yell at them for bothering yeah, me. Yeah, and that's I have or I have to too. sell them something. So. Oh, right. let me help you with that one. Okay, so so this happens sometimes, and I was looking for Wally to say something like this, but he he knows how to solve a problem. So everybody, pull out your pens. I want you to write this down. Three one seven. 289-3429. Do not call it. I won't answer. I don't answer phone calls um, on that phone. I just, I couldn't possibly, but text it anytime. And here's what I want you to text me. So th this is the scenario that a guy with 1500 inspections is worried about because it's a huge volume kind of, he experiences one of everything in a month that other inspectors experience over a period of years. Um, and what will happen is, is, you know, somebody will call in and say, oh, I have this problem. Okay, well, make a claim, go to submityourclaim.net or, or call the 800 number or review your policy and, and you send them over. And then they talk to one of our people who is there. They're one of, you know, 100 people in a call center, probably an apartment dweller, right? They, they know about their mechanical situation, but they, they talk to them, they follow scripts on the screen and they tell them exactly what to do. And then they send them an email with exactly what to do and like upload your invoice here, they get that, they review it, and they go back for like a clarification or something. And this is almost every time that we ever have somebody say, oh gosh, uh, the warranty's not doing exactly what I want it to do. It is when we ask a clarification, largely on roofs. 
So here's what happens with a, a roof. What does a roofer do when they come out to a house? What do they want to do? You need to do they roofing. Want roof. They want roofing, roofing work. They want to do a whole new roof. <laughs> um, so as an example, last week I had one where um, there was a leak in the roof. That's absolutely covered by any new leak on a five-year roof leak protection plan on the 90-day warranty is covered. I mean, any leak, basically, unless it was like somebody actually took a hammer to it and broke their roof. We don't care what condition the roof was in as long as it was not leaking or showing signs of leakage at time of inspection. That coverage is simple. So that was the claim. We had a leak. They sent in a roof leak repair estimate. I call it that generously. This guy came out and said... Here was his, his estimate. We need to replace uh, all of the, the, the ridge uh, shingles. We need to replace every valley. We need to go through every soffit because this wasn't uh, installed right. This isn't ideal. It only leaked over here, but while I was there, you know, lucky I showed up because it's time for me to redo like every single part. So that was sent in and it was like a $3,500 estimate. It was leaking in one valley. Now, we could figure out probably what the cost was of that one valley, but our person responded with, and this was the miscommunication, that's almost always what, what it is. You know, this guy's talking about conditions of the home that are not within the inspection. You know, the, the inspector doesn't lift up the shingles and, you know, drill a hole in the uh, valley roll and measure its thickness or whatever. You know, it's like crazy stuff. So we told him that's not covered. We're not taking your roof and improving it and we need an itemized leak repair estimate. Now, what is the client here? They hear that we're not covering it. <laughs> you know, that's all they heard in this case, and that happens sometimes. And then that came back to the inspector. Well, that inspector's a user of ours. He happened to have that cell phone number. He texted me, roof leak claim, this address, this is the client's phone number, they're telling me a story. And as a home inspector who's experienced the, this phenomenon before. So that then gets screenshotted, sent off to uh, somebody to take care of it. And like, like then they have to reach out to the client and force the issue. Here's what we were really asking. We're on the phone with you now. We're going through this. We're gonna explain, we're gonna solve the communication problem. And at the end of the day, we found another roofer to come out. He did the roof leak repair for about 1200 bucks. It was a $500 deductible because it was a five year and it was a year after the inspection. So they got a $700 check and they didn't spend $3,500. What did we save that client, by the way? Did we save them uh, the uh, $700 we sent them or did we save them more than that? Oh yeah, we saved them. They paid 500 on something that they would have been sold $3,500 worth of stuff. We'd save them three grand. You know, So when we look at those numbers over the year and, and that process that people go through, we save homeowners tens of millions of dollars. Uh, any last words from anybody here? Quick question. How do you pay your guys? Uh, sure. Yeah, check. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just curious if you don't mind. Uh, a percentage? Yeah. I pay them a percentage of the fee, but they earn about $75,000 a year. Truthfully, my guys probably don't even know what percentage they earn because they earn about $75,000 a year and they go, I make plenty of money. But they earn a small percentage of each job. So, so real quick, some housekeeping, yeah. and then we'll you know hang about. around, talk to anybody. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Um, if you want to sign up for the package that Sean uses, that Wally uses, that Preston uses, uh, who else is with us? Rob. Oh yeah, Rob. <laughs> Over here, that next three package, it kind of lists everything that they use in their business. Just check the box <coughs> above it, and if you're not a user. We're going to sign you up for that and you'll get it for six months with no money out of pocket. So you won't actually pay us anything on each inspection. What's the difference between recall check and recall check? Uh, uh, that is a detail that we will go over with you on a one hour phone call. Recall check is just the follow up emails for recall check. Okay. On the back, you'll see at the top three email offers that we can automate out of the system. Those emails cost you nothing, they drive client. Uh, loyalty and some of them drive a little bit of money. No reason not to check them, but it, no, no decision to be made today. You can go over that when you do an account review. New and existing clients, I suggest the account review. You know what? Look through everything, make sure that everything is optimized for your business. That, you know, you might learn something about the resources page, no harm in it. Uh, and then that, that email package that Sean, or excuse me, that Rob did, um, we can have somebody do that for you. That's that. Uh, next thing they enhance your communication 
And then under that, there's a monthly flyer package. We handed out a little brochure about that. If anybody has questions, that's fine. And uh, you can just forget about the last section there about rate on because down here you're not going to be testing for much of it anyway. Um, so you save a whole bunch of money, but you miss out on the ability to uh, test for radon. And don't forget these cards with all that stuff at the bottom. Now, I still have to draw four. I'm giving you all the brochures, so that's taken care of. Uh, I'll go ahead and do this. You you sign up for the next three, or if um, you're already in the, the crew, we'll just we'll do a promotional video. But I need all of these cards. Yep. Uh, I need all of these cards so that I can draw for a winner of the uh, CMI application fee. So whether you qualify or don't, one of your guys is going to, it can be used in the future. Uh, but that's courtesy of Nick Rubico and Inernachi. Couldn't be here today because he is babysitting. Um, 